So welcome friends how are you all friends what if godlike Naruto was Fem Haku, Seraphor alive in DXD World Movie. Today was a day of a loss for Team 7, one Naruto Uzumaki used the body flicker jutsu to take a hit for a girl he just met a few days ago. One she meant to take for her unofficial father, who was about to be on the receiving end of Kakashi Hitaki's lightning blade, Haku Yuki Momochi, wielder of the ice style Keke Genkai, used her ice mirrors to put herself in the way of the lightning blade after her defeat at the hands of the boy who now had a lightning covered hand sticking out of his back through his left lung. Naruto, why, was all Kakashi could ask in clear shock and he pulled his hand from his student's chest. Falling to his knees and into the embrace of Haku, who was clutching her close. Tears running down her cheeks, Naruto weakly chuckled as he coughed up a lobe of blood, I, couldn't tell let you throw why your life away, and no one sure should live a life a as a tool, he paused as he coughed up more blood w when we met in th that meadow, it, was just like this, only, you weren't crying, you are still, as beautiful, as, an, gel, with that Naruto closed his eyes, one last breath leaving him as he died with a smile on his content on his face. Naruto, Haku asked softly, shaking him gently, hey, come on, this isn't funny, wake up. Haku, Sabuza said softly, still pinned by Kakashi's hounds, H is gone. Meanwhile, Sakura was watching this, while she was worried about her crush, Sasuke, who was a pincushion thanks to Haku's senbon needles, was in shock, her blonde teammate, one who had been a constant source of encouragement and light in her life, was dead, died protecting a begrudgingly more beautiful girl than herself, to be honest, she felt confused as to why she felt jealous of the girl that was cradling her knucklehead of a teammate, crying out in despair and anguish. Back over with Haku, Zabuza and Kakashi, Kakashi was in a daze, Sensei, I've failed you. But you'd be proud. He gave his life to save someone he found precious, I'm just sorry he had to die by my hand, just like Rin. Haku clutched Naruto's corpses and wailed out in agony, Zabuza was finally released the hound's hold, having sensed there was no longer a need to continue to pin down the swordsmen. Kakashi, I have no further desire to fight, allow me to share why Haku is like this or at least what she told me, the demon of the mist said solemnly. Flashback, three days ago, Forest Meadow, after lashing out at that brat Inari, spending the night training to the point of exhaustion, Naruto wakes up to a gorgeous black-haired girl who had to guess was maybe a year older than him, leaning over him. Hey, you'll catch a cold if you sleep out here like that, she said in a soft melodic voice. Ha, huh, he said, trying to wipe the sleep out of his sapphire blue eyes, which the black-haired girl's brown eyes were instantly drawn to, are you an angel miss? Catching poor Haku off guard with a comment like that, she couldn't help but blush at the unintended compliment, even knowing it was from someone who was just waking up and most likely not thinking clearly, still, that's, the first genuine compliment anyone has given me, half asleep or not, no. Get it together girl, H is with those shinobi protecting Zabuza's target, H is an enemy. Too bad H is so cute, wait where did that come from? She thought at war with herself. No, I'm not an angel, thank you for the compliment though, here's let me help you up, she said with a smile and her right hand stuck out. He nodded and gently took her hand, but when he did, both of them felt as if a jolt of electricity passed through their bodies, not the harmful kind, no, it more the fairy tale finding your soulmate jolt, their eyes didn't leave one another, their hands stay clasped together, both had faint blushes spread across their faces, it was as if they were in their own little world. After a minute or two of staying like that, Haku remembers what she came to this meadow for to begin with, so she pulls him to his feet, but for whatever reason, she couldn't let go of his hand, it felt so warm and fit perfectly in hers. This it was him who took the initiative and withdrew his hand even if he didn't want to, he coughed to clear his throat, so, what brings you out this way miss, both asking the stated question and the hidden question of her name. Oh, my apologies, my name is Haku and am here to gather herbs for a friend who got badly injured recently, she said with a warm smile, still with a blush on her face. 
Im Naruto, nice to meet you. Here, let me help you, it's the least I can do for waking me up, he said, not once looking away from her warm brown eyes. All she could do was nod, as they worked, they occasionally stole glances at each other, both blushing when their eyes met, still unable to get that spark out of their minds, trying to contemplate what it meant, neither had ever experienced anything like it, however, it wasn't all silence, they discussed why he became a ninja, her passing on the ever so important lesson that would lead to his demise. I believe when a person has something important they want to protect, that's when they can become truly strong. Once they gathered enough herbs, Haku bowed to Naruto, thank you for your help Naruto, I must be on my way, she said before turning around and by the way, I'm a guy. Naruto smirked, no, you're not, no one else knows this, but I have a pretty good nose, I can smell the lilac perfume you wear, as subtle as it may be, besides, you're too angelically beautiful to be a guy. To say she was shell-shocked would be an understatement, however, she recovered and quietly saying please, don't be on that bridge in three days, before running off with tears in her eyes, knowing he probably figured out she was working with Zabuza if his nose was good enough to pick up on her perfume. Flashback end, when she got back and was healing me. I could tell her resolve, her world, had been shaken, she told me everything, Zabuza said as he looked down at his adopted daughter, who was crying even harder having relived that moment, you could see it in the way they fought, even when the kid used that malevolent chakra, there was hesitation, neither truly wanted to hurt the other, it was clear in the three days they were separated, they realized they loved each other, well and truly. Kakashi nodded that, the moment Naruto appeared, Haku stopped her assault, Naruto looked like he was being torn in two, Sakura had been listening in, was shocked and heartbroken, she remembered all the times Naruto asked her out on dates after Sasuke rejected her, how'd Shed reject him in the worst possible way, she now regretted everything, how she called him an idiot, how Shed berate him with violence, she knew she too was crying, Shed never had the chance to make up for it now. Unfortunately, it was at this moment that shit-eating maggot known as Gato decided to make his appearance. Truly pathetic Zabuza, losing your resolve and will to fight over the death of some snot-nosed brat, so much for the great demon of the mist, he spat, it's a good thing I never intended to pay you, especially after that little slut broken my arm, good thing is that I was able to round some reasonably priced bandits to do the job, altogether for the same price you asked for. As he said that, over 100 armed men appeared from the fog, Gato grinned, kill them all but spare the women, especially that black-haired one clutching that corpse, I want the pleasure of breaking her myself, before directing his attention to the opposing shinobi, do try to put up a fight and if you could take a few of them with you, you'd be saving me a lot of money, he said as he laughed maniacally. Haku having heard what he had planned looked up with absolute fury, Sakura looked like she was terrified at the implications, shaking like a leaf, the ice shinobi was shaken with rage, she set her beloved down gently. Zabuza, Kakashi, let's deal with this trash before we bury Naruto, he deserves a proper burial, she said with an edge Zabuza never heard from her, it honestly scared him. Kakashi too was scared at what she would do if he didn't help, she turned to her former target, you better watch over him, or I will make you wish I killed you, however, I won't actually do it, not until you finish your bridge, which had better be named after him. As the battle commenced, Tazuna and Sakura stood in front of Naruto's corpse only to feel a gust of wind, when they looked back, Naruto's body was missing, oh, come on, where the hell did he go? He was just here. Tazuna asked frantically, I am so dead, I can only hope some miracle happens to have that girl spare my life. What they didn't know that a woman with long blood red hair, violet eyes, and bat-like wings coming from her back, wearing a jonan tactical vest, and black anbu pants, black toeless sandals, and a black tank top under the vest flew in faster than the eye could see. I am so sorry I didn't get here fast enough, my darling baby boy, the woman said as she held her now deceased son. This was Kushina Uzumaki, the former Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed Fox, mother of Naruto Uzumaki, and once renowned as the Red Hot-Blooded Habanero or the Red Death by her enemies. Thirty minutes earlier, 
in the secretly rebuilt village of Uzushigakure, on an island surrounded by whirlpools and the once proud home of the Uzumaki clan, now the earthly base for the four great satans and the remaining pillars of the underworld, Kushina had felt the malevolent chakra of the nine-tailed fox and a sense of impending doom of her only son, one she wished she could have raised but was unable to without revealing she was reborn as a devil in the service of one of the four satans, Seraphal Leviathan as a knight. Lady Seraphal, please let me attempt to save my son. I have this horrible feeling itch is about to die, she asked her master. Seraphal had the appearance of a child despite being hundreds of years old and having large breasts, she has a bubbly personality and uses her appearance to cosplay as a magical girl, Kushi dear, you know we can't reveal ourselves to the five great nations, if you go to him, you'll have to bring him back to be reborn as one of us, however, if you are caught, you will be labeled as a stray, do you understand? She said in a rare moment of seriousness. Yes. Kushina was saved and revived by Seraphal Leviathan on that fateful night of Naruto's birth. Seraphal went out to investigate the massive source of demonic energy she sensed ten minutes before the fox was sealed within the baby boy and got there a few moments before Haruzen arrived on the scene. Of course, Imladi, I will be careful, Kushina said before taking off with great speed. Hum, maybe I'll finally find someone who will worthy of this mutated rook piece. Seraphal said playing with the glowing red rook chess piece. Present time, Kushina had tears in her eyes, she wasn't fast enough to save her son, but she could sense that the fox was fighting against the final function of Naruto's reaper death seal, desperately fighting to stay alive, if she could make it back to Uzushigakure in time, the fox could be a great boon to the underworld. Five minutes later she arrived with moments to spare, she arrived in front of Seraphal, Lady Seraphal, I was unsuccessful in saving him, but if we hurry and reincarnate him, he will retain the fox's power. Seraphal looked intrigued. You mean we can have a pet foxy woxy within the family? Okay. Let's see what magical girl Leviathan can manage. She approached and immediately she felt her mutated rook piece pulse and react to the young boy, oh dear. Seems we will indeed have a pet foxy woxy. She said excitedly before getting serious and placing the piece on the boy's body, Naruto Uzumaki, I call on you from the realm of the dead, return to the realm of the living as a devil in the service of Seraphal Leviathan as my mighty rook. As she finished the incantation, Naruto's body exploding a violent light of crimson red and orange energy, a mix of the nine-tailed fox's chakra and devil magic merging into one causing Naruto to absorb all of the fox's power as his own, making him part Katsune and turning his hair blood red bring out his dormant Uzumaki genes, if there wasn't a barrier surrounding the island, the five great nations would have felt the surge of power, however, even the mighty barrier was struggling against it. It was this power that brought Sarex Lucifer and his sister, Rias Gremori, Seraphal, what is going on? The entire island is on edge, everyone thinks we're under attack, Sarex asked frantically. There is no cause for concern Zeki. This amazing power is coming from my new rook. I believe Naru is going to be the greatest rook ever, the bubbly Satan said excitedly. Such power? Lady Seraphal, I hope we can discuss you lending him to get me out of my accursed engagement, Rias said almost drooling at the sheer power the power was radiating. Now Rias, you know I can't do that, it would look like favoritism and cause unrest amongst the surviving pillars, especially the Phoenix, Seraphal said sternly, besides, I don't think Kushi would like having her son being used that way. It was then that the resurrection and transformation was complete, Naruto groans as he sits up and looks around, where am I, what happened? The last thing I remember was dying in Haku's arms, he asked, clearly confused only to be tackled into a crushing hug by a strange red-headed woman, um, who are you? Oh, my sweet baby boy, I'm so glad we can finally be together, Kushina said crying tears of joy. Wait, baby boy, he thought to himself before piecing it together, em mom. Yes Naruto, I'm your mother, my name is Kushina Uzumaki, she introduced herself. Wait, Uzumaki, what the hell is going on? He said feeling overwhelmed. 
Well Naru, calm down then well start from the beginning and explain everything, Seraphal said. The former blonde nodded, taking note that his hair was now red, and waited for the explanation. Now, to start, I am Seraphal Leviathan, I was the one that saved your mother the night of your birth, however, I was only able to do so by resurrecting her as a devil using this, she said holding up a pawn chess piece, this is what we call an evil piece, I know chess isn't common here in the elemental nations, but think of it as an easier game of shogi. Naruto nodded, signifying he was following so far, if just barely, now, as you said, you died, but your mother requested me to allow her to attempt to rescue you, but she was too late, she was, however, fast enough to get you back fast enough that I could resurrect you without upsetting that old grump Shini. Hold up, Shini? Do you mean the Shinigami? And why didn't my mom come to me sooner? He asked before turning to his mom with tears in his eyes, didn't you love me or want me? Oh Naruto, of course, I love you and wanted to be at your side to raise you. But we devils aren't ready to reveal ourselves to the humans, if the five great nations knew of our existence, they'd see us as a threat and attempt to wipe us out, therefore, I couldn't leave this island, but I kept watch over you using magic, I've everything that's happened, and if I ever get my hands on that damned idealist husband of mine, Minato is gonna be thankful H is already dead. Kushina started off consoling her son only to go off on a tangent. Wait, 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 Minato, as Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage, the yellow flash, that Minato, the former Jinchuriki asked trying to wrap his head around everything. That's right, Minato and I loved each other, but he loved the village more than his own family, he probably left instructions for Haruzen to keep your heritage secret in order to keep you as a weapon for Kanoa, the loving mother said with disgust clear in her voice. So, the grandfatherly act was part of the ploy too, ha, huh? tch, that figures, Naruto said defeatedly. Getting back to the explanation, I was able to resurrect you. But it came at a cost, you are now half devil, half kitsune. You see, during the process of resurrection, the fox's life was tied to yours, so its chakra was fused with yours and the devil magic of the evil piece I used to bring you back to life, turning your hair red, and your pupils into animalistic slits, Seraphal said, earning a nod from the boy. Okay, so since you resurrected me and mom, what does that mean for us? I assume we're bound to you somehow? He asked surprising his mother and Seraphal who had been watching. Very good Naru, I knew you were smarter than you let on. The bubbly magical girl said hugging him close, shoving his head into her impressive breasts. Lady Sarah, Kushina said with a sigh, maybe it's time to introduce our guests and explain devil culture to him as well as the role of each evil piece. Poor Naruto was blushing up a storm, he wasn't used to such affection, however, he remembered something that disheartened him, wait, if I'm a devil now, and we can't interact with humans, that means I can't explore my feelings for Haku, he said on the verge of tears, I mean I wouldn't have been able to since I was dead, but being alive and not being to see her hurts Yano. That brought frowns to everyone present, I'm sorry dear, I know how you feel, but within four years we will be able to reveal ourselves if everything goes according to plan, you can only hope she doesn't find someone else in the meantime, Kushina said, clearly understanding his pain having to watch Naruto from afar. Is there any way to let her know that I'm all right at all? Shusha's probably killing herself with guilt since I took that blow for her, he almost begged. The Satans that were present thought for a moment, perhaps, but you'd need a familiar, they are similar to some an animal that you shinobi use, Sarah said. How do I get one? Naruto asked, unintentionally using the dreaded puppy dog eyes technique. It was then that a small masculine voice made itself known, a black cat walked out of the shadows there will be no need to search, I have been watching you closely your whole life young man, and I would gladly send this message for you, and form a pact with you. L Lady Yoruichi, Kushina said in shock, Yoruichi, so that's where you've been, you were very reckless leaving the island, I know you specialize in stealth and espionage, Sorex said with a frustrated frown. Naruto on the other hand looked even more confused, a, talking cat, wait, I've seen this cat before, wait, 
Lady Yoruichi. My apologies, allow me to introduce myself properly, the black cat said before transforming in a puff of smoke, once that cleared, what, or rather who was revealed caused Sir X to blush mildly and turn his head to avert his eyes, knowing full well his wife would kill him for even looking at another woman, much less the naked woman in the room. Naruto on the other hand looked like he was going to pass from a nosebleed, in front of everyone was a tall, absolutely gorgeous dark-skinned woman, with big, firm breasts, piercing golden yellow eyes, and silky purple hair, revealing every inch of her flawless, toned body to everyone, it didn't help that she was approaching poor Naruto with a seductive sway in her hips, making no attempt to cover herself. My name is Yoruichi, it's a pleasure to officially meet you, Naruto, she said in a very haughty tone that pushed him beyond his limit and passed out. Kushina just sighed, did you really have to go that far? If you're been watching, you know H is not used to affection, much less teasing on that level, before that Haku girl came around, my boy had a crush on an abusive fangirl, strutting your admittingly goddess-like body that even me a little envious like that is gonna have him out for a few hours, by then the bridge builder could be a world of hurt thanks Haku's despair. I have to agree with Kushi here Neko darling, now, can you go and deliver that message? Tazuna will be important at later dates, and I don't think Naru would want Haku to taint her kind and pure heart by killing an innocent man, Seraphal said as more of an order than a suggestion and Yoruichi knew that, she may seem like Shusha's all rainbows and sunshine but piss off Seraphal Leviathan and she could very well make this entire planet disappear without a trace with a wave of her hand, and when you get back and H is awake, you'd better be dressed and ready to make the familiars pact. All right? I'll go let that Haku know that Naruto is alright and will send periodic messages, the dark-skinned beauty said before vanishing. So, I guess we'd better make him comfortable, Rias, would you help me move him to the couch dear? Kushina asked with a sweet smile, let it be known that Kushina didn't like her fellow redhead, thinking that she was just a manipulative bitch, she may consider her peerage as family, but wouldn't think twice about using someone to get what she wants and she knew Shed tried to use her brother's siskin behavior to get what she wants. Rias nodded, even though she didn't like Kushina either for her being far too strong-willed and free-spirited to be manipulated, but she knew that the Uzumaki was considerably stronger than her. Despite her not being an official high-class devil like she was, she had the respect of her brother, mother, and cousin Serorg, who was considered the strongest of the young devils, her father didn't seem to care as long she kept to her arranged marriage to that pig riser. When they went to lift Naruto, they both were surprised, the resurrection and transformation did more than just alter his species, but it fixed his malnourishment problem, Naruto was a couple of inches taller, and his physique was so much more defined, from scrawny to one that was built for both speed and power, like a swimmer's body. What in the nine circles of hell? This kid is ripped. There's not an ounce of fat on him, H's solid muscle, Rias exclaimed in shock. Oh my, Kushina said with a slight blush on her face, as both tried to control their thoughts, they managed to get him to a nearby sofa, once their Seraphal and Serex came to inspect him. My my, this is curious, this doesn't usually happen, it must be Foxy's unrestrained power that caused this, Naru was cute before but now H has gone a girl's tripping over themselves to get a piece of him, Seraphal said, licking her lips. And from what we've observed, the boy only had half of the nine-tailed fox's power within him, if we could broker a deal with the Shinigami to give young Naruto the rest of that power, he could very well become the strongest devil alive, stronger than us four satans combined with enough training, Sorex said in awe. Let's, just wait for Naru to wake up, we need to finish explaining everything to him, we didn't touch on the three factions yet, the normally bubbly Satan said, trying to keep the dormant sin of lust in check, something she could tell the boy's mother was also trying to do as well. Land of waves, with Yoruichi, landing on the incomplete bridge, Yoruichi, now dressed in and a black tank top that exposes her toned stomach, black cargo pants, orange toeless shoes, and a burnt orange denim jacket that was left open to show off her impressive bust, looked around and saw that the battle was complete, which meant she had to hurry in order to save Tazuna. 
She ran through the celebrating village and arrived at the bridge builder's home hearing her quarry's heated shouting and the sound of a struggle, meaning Sakura and Kakashi were likely trying to restrain the angry Kunoichi. Let me go. I told him to watch over Naruto or he'd make his life a living hell. Haku screaming, struggling to break free. I'm sorry Haku. I know how you feel but the remainder of my team are still on the clock, which means we are tasked with protecting till he finished his bridge, Kakashi strained to say. It was then Yoruichi decided to knock on the door and enter the house causing all the shinobi in the house to be on guard, well most of them, Sasuke was still unconscious. Seeing him ready to strike, the dark-skinned beauty put her hands up to show she meant no harm, easy there. I mean you no harm. I was sent to deliver a message to the raging girl you were just restraining, is there somewhere private we can talk? Zabuza and Kakashi look at the mysterious woman, about to stop Haku, but notice they already left in a burst of speed, where did they go? Forest Meadow, Haku and Naruto's special spot. We can talk here, only me and one other person knows this exact location, Haku said before looking at the dark-skinned woman, so, who are you? Who sent you? And what is this message? Well to answer in order, I am Yoruichi, I serve the one you love most, in fact, he sent me, he asked me to tell you that H has been brought back to life, but unfortunately unable to return to your side for a few years, he will however be in contact with you through me, Yoruichi said calmly. What do you mean he is unable to return? Is someone holding him against his will? The ice wielder said summoning her Keke Genkai, freezing Yoruichi's feet in place. No, H is not, in fact, H is being well taken care of and will be receiving extensive training from the people who resurrected him. While he wants nothing more than to return to your side and explore his new feelings for you, he knows that H is not welcome back in his own village, he told you as much, right? The older woman said, unfazed by her feet being frozen. Haku nodded and released her love servant, fine, ill keep things from his team, they'd stop at nothing to get him back if they knew he was alive and well, however, take care of him for me, and tell him that he'd better make it up to me when he comes back. Yoruichi just chuckled and nodded before disappearing and burst of speed, leaving the girl standing there smiling, ill wait for you Naruto, ill live for the day I can be with you again. Back on Uzashiagakure, two hours later, after Yoruichi left and his sister got Naruto on the couch, Sorex realized that with his improved muscle mass and additional height, his current clothes would likely be too tight for him now, so, he had asked ladies to leave the room, but by this time his wife and queen, Grafia Lucifuge showed up worrying about her husband after feeling that massive power. With Grafia's help, Sorex got a change of clothes for Naruto. A black zip-up jacket with ice blue highlights, and an orange Uzumaki on the left shoulder and the Citri clan symbol on the right. Black track pants with a blue stripe running each leg, and black steel-toed combat boots, however, while changing the Uzumaki boy, Sorex and Grafia couldn't help but get a good look at his package, while Grafia kept it together and didn't show any outward signs of being affected, she knew he was already bigger than her husband, much to the obvious envy of the man she vowed to spend eternity with. H. How? How can a kid of 12 years old be that big? Sorex vocalized his envy. While the devil Lucifer was a respectable 5 inches, this boy had him beat at 7 inches. This kid is going to make whichever girl he ends up with very happy. That was an hour ago. Now Yoruichi, Kushina, and Seraphore were all in the room and Naruto had woken up. Naruto inspected his new clothes, sad to see the orange gone but once told it was to represent his new affinity to the Citri clan, he accepted it without another word. Now then, since everyone is here and you've got clothes that fit, let us continue with the explanation from earlier, Seraphol starts before taking a pause. But first, let me introduce our guests, the gentleman in the regal-looking clothes and red hair is Sorex Lucifer, formerly Sorex Grimani, to his left is his wife and queen, Grafia Lucifuge, to his right is his sister and current heir to Grimani family, Rias Grimani, and while you've met the little minx that made you pass out, the dark-skinned goddess next to you is a necomata by the name of Yoruichi, she has the ability to transform into a cat for her espionage missions. Now honey, 
Lady Seraphal, and Lord Serex are two of the four Satans of the underworld, the other two are Aduka Beelzebub and Falbium Asmodeus, you see Lady Seraphal was once heir to the Citri clan before being chosen to be Satan Leviathan, much like Serex was chosen to be Satan Lucifer, now her sister, Sona Citri, is heir to Citri clan, Kushina stepped up, getting a nod of thanks from her master. Now then, currently the world is at standstill war in the shadows between the three great factions, the angels. The purest being in existence, the fallen angels, who gave in to their greed and sin losing their grace granted to them by Kami, God, Seraphal starts to pick up again before everyone in the room winces and clutches their heads at the mention of God, then there's us, devils, and as you just noticed, even mentioning angels' leaders' name causes us pain, weapons of light are lethal to us. Now Naruto, we'll move on to the evil pieces, each devil gets their own set of evil pieces when they reach high class, the leader of the peerage has the king piece within them. The second in command of the peerage is called the queen, and often help take care and manage the peerage if the king should be indisposed, which you can imagine happens a lot with Satan class devils, they have all the qualities of the bishops, rooks, and knights, and we'll explain that shortly. Next are the bishops, they are often either the healers or heavy magic casters, they have a high magic reserve and magic attack power but have low defensive capabilities. Next, is the piece used to bring you back to life, the rook, they are usually the heavy physical hitters and meat shields due to their extraordinary physical offensive and defensive capabilities, but often slower than most, however, can be fixed through training, through what Kushina and Yoruichi have said, you're pretty quick yourself to be able to outrun Anbu agents after your pranks back in Kanoa. Next is the knight, they are speed demons and more often than use swords or such weapons, while they latch in physical defense, they make up for it with their speed and evasion, after all, if you can't hit your target, you can't deal damage. Last but certainly not else is the pawn, while in chess they are seen as sacrificial pieces, in the devil world they can do so much more, they are still the foot soldiers of the peerage, however, if they get deep enough into anywhere the king declares enemy territory, they can use the promotion skill to gain the powers of any other piece other than the king. She continued looking to Sorex to pick it up so can catch her breath. Now, in order to become a high-class devil and get your own peerage, you need to gain experience and influence in order to have enough standing for the elders and the satans to recognize you as worthy of having an evil piece set while being born into one of the major clans or pillars of the underworld certain helps like Rias here, she still had to gain the experience and knowledge she needed in order to lead her own peerage, the devil Lucifer explained. Now young Naruto, there are usually three types of kings, those who see their peerage as family, much like Lady Seraphal and Rias de, those who see their peerage as business partners and employees, then there is certainly worst of the bunch, those who use their evil pieces to make a harem and treat their peerage as sex slaves or tools, Kushina said, noticing a look of disgust on Rhea's face. Naruto growls hearing about the mistreatment of some of the peerages, then he'll make sure to beat the ever-loving shit out of those who see their peerages as sex slaves. Everyone in the room smiled and nodded at that, while Rias had a small blush on her cheeks. So Naru, do you understand everything we've told you? I know that was a lot of information we dumped on you, Seraphal asked with a cute smile. More or less, if I need a refresher then he'll ask, he said, returning her smile, now, what was this about making a pact with Yoruichi to make her my familiar, he asked. Basically, we familiars are a devil's servant, we handle delivering messages. Handing out job flyers, acting as bodyguards or Anything else our master requires, the necomata started off serious than when in a flirty, teasing tone earning a blush from the young man. Clearly remember the glorious view of her goddess-like naked body, in order to bind or capture us, there is usually an incantation used, but, since I've already agreed to become your familiar, all I require is your seal somewhere on my body, then you can summon me to your side at any time, and personally, it prefer it somewhere visible to show your ownership of me, you wouldn't believe the number of horn dogs that attempt to bind or capture me. Um, okay, 
Naruto said before thinking for a minute, how about on your stomach? You seem to like showing off your abs, earning a nod from Yoruichi. Um, how do I do this? I don't know how to use my magic yet, Naruto asked sheepishly. Naru darling, it's much like how you use chakra, only you don't need hand signs to do it. Just focus on the energy within you and put your hand onto her stomach, Seraphal giggled. Nodding and doing as he was told, he places his hand on the familiar's stomach and focuses, after a second, a moan could be heard from the dark-skinned woman as the seal was set. As he removed his hand the seal was revealed, it was in the shape of the Uzumaki swirl but had a fox's head in the center. And with that, my sexy master, I'm all yours, Yoruichi whispered huskily into his ear, pressing her bountiful breasts against his rock-hard chest before planting a kiss on his cheek earning jealous glares from Kushina and Seraphal, though it confused Kushina as to why she was so jealous, and a full-body blush from the poor twelve-year-old. It's been two days since Naruto's been resurrected as a devil and reunited with his mother, during which time H has figured out how to use his magic abilities on top of his chakra, speaking of his chakra, his already horrendous control was completely shot due to having half of the nine-tailed fox's chakra added to his own, oh yes, that was another bomb that Kushina and Seraphal dropped on him. He sat in his room as he thought about how that came about. Flashback, one day ago, after giving the rest of the day off to catch up with his mother, learning what Shusha's doing and her giving him a tour of the island, he learned how being a devil was any different from being human, aside from the obvious weakness to holy elements, turns out he was gone alive almost forever and as he tested himself, had hundreds of times more strength maybe even thousands. He asked if he could test his strength on something, so Yoruichi leads him to a device that would apparently display his strength in a numeric value, but since they didn't have a bench value of his strength, the flirtatious Nekomata said they would see where his strength was with augmenting his chakra or magic into his enhanced body, however, when he did, he causes the senses to overload and causes the damn thing to explode leaving three very shocked and excited women gawking at him. Naru that's amazing. No one has ever done that before. Not even us Satan class devils. We've maxed it out but never broken that silly thing. Oh, Ajuka is gonna be so surprised we broke this. I need to hurry and talk to Shini about giving us the other half of Foxy. Seraphal shouted jumping up and down in excitement not realizing she dropped a massive bomb on poor Naruto. Wait, what? Do you mean to tell me that idealist moron of a father only sealed half of the nine-tailed fox inside me? And Shini has the other half. My life was a living because I have only half. Naruto started off shocked then got increasingly angry. Kushina sighed and face-palmed, Lady Seraphal, was all she says, Knowing her mistress could get excitable and spout random things out of her mouth, they had agreed to tell Naruto about this, but in a more controlled manner, one where they could sit her son down and possibly have Yoruichi distract him slightly knowing he'd blow up at this news. Master, please calm down, I promise we'll explain everything to you, Yoruichi said pulling him into a hug, and his face into her impressive breasts, not only calming him down but turning him into a blushing mess. Now. You know how that the fox was sealed into you right? His mother asked getting a nod in return, well, your father knew he couldn't seal all of it inside you, that would have been too much power for an infant to contain, it would have torn your tiny body apart, so, he sealed half within himself and took it with him into the Shinigami's stomach since the seal he used called on the death god for help, the price was his own life. Naruto remained silent, thinking about what he was told, but surprisingly he didn't feel any sadness, guilt, or sympathy for his idiot father, but asked, and you guys want to try and find a way to give me the fox's full strength. That's right Naru. You'd not only be invincible and but able to protect those precious to you, you'd be the new nine-tailed fox of the elemental nations, only you could never be sealed because you being part devil with equally massive magic reserves, there wouldn't be a seal strong enough to hold you. Seraphal said continuously bouncing in place. Haku, Ayami, Anko, Panda, Naruto thought with a sad frown before getting determined, all right, do what you can, even if I have to kill someone in exchange, he'll do it. This earned a very loud yay. 
from his mistress and chuckles, giggles in response to that. Flash black end. Naruto dear. Are you in here? Kushina asked pulling him out of his musing. Yeah mom, come in, I was thinking about yesterday, Naruto replied with a smile. We should start discussing your training, however, we need to find a way to get the scrolls your father and I left you back in the village first, then wait for Sara to make that deal with Shini, she said with a frown. The new Katsune chuckled at the nickname before thinking for a moment, well, Sarek said that Yoruichi was an espionage expert, right? He asked getting a nod in response, well, I could kill two birds with one stone, I wanna know what the villagers' response is to my death and who actually misses me, as well Kakashi sensei's fate, while Shush is doing that, she can grab what we need and inform only those who really care about me that I'm alive but to keep quiet till we can reveal ourselves. Oh, is there anyone particular you're worried about? His mother asked with a coy smile. He nodded with a content smile, pulling out a small broken half of a pendant, and holds it close to his chest, yeah, a couple of people actually, Ayami from Ichiraku Ramen, Anko Matarashi from T and I, and, someone who I know from the orphanage but was adopted and I never saw again, but she was my only friend in that hell. Ayami? Chukas little girl? Kushina asked getting a surprised look from her son, oh, don't be surprised, where you do think you got your ramen obsession from? I used to drag your father there all the time while I was pregnant with you, old man Chuchi probably couldn't say anything due to some law put in place by Haruzan, the same could be said for Kakashi, he was your father's student after all. Naruto growls, I am really starting to hate that old bastard, but at least it makes sense why I saw the sadness in old man Ichiraka's eyes whenever I came into his shop before he put on a brave face welcomed me warmly though I'm curious as to why Kakashi never taught us anything but teamwork and that tree climbing trick. Honey, Kakashi's been through a lot, he lost his father to the village driving to depression for going against a mission to save his team and eventually killed himself. And as I said, he was on your father's genin team, and everyone on his team died in various ways, both during the last great ninja war, it was his teammate that gave him that Sharingan in his left eye, who died rescuing the other teammate for the hidden stone ninjas in a cave in, a boulder crushed his entire right side. As for the other teammate, she was kidnapped again, but by the water ninja and turned into the Jinchuriki of the three-tailed turtle with a weak seal so that when she was brought back to Kanoa she'd unleash the turtle within the village and destroy everything, but she sacrificed herself by throwing herself in front of Kakashi's Chidori, the same way you did for that girl, Haku she said solemnly. Naruto eyes went wide at the last part, Kami, he said clutching his head and causing his mom to do the same, OWW, you weren't kidding, he must be feeling like absolute shit right now and more than likely relived that moment when he killed me, he said in a very quiet voice. After a few minutes of silence, he summoned Yoruichi, yes, master, what can I do for you, or to you? She asked with a purr earning the usual blush from him. All right. Get off my son you minx, Kushina snarled, still not sure as to why she felt so jealous whenever Yoruichi or Seraphor would be all over him and teasing him. The dark-skinned beauty just smirked knowingly at the night and climbed off her master, okay, serious this time, what is it you desire of me Naru? She said kneeling. Get up, you know you don't have to kneel before me, he sighed, as for why I summoned you, I have a mission for you, I need you to infiltrate Kanoa, spy on the council when my former team gets back, watch the reactions of the villagers, and inform, two people that I'm alright, but to keep quiet, then liberate the scrolls left for me by Mom and Minato, probably somewhere in the Hokage's tower. Who are these two people? She said in her mission tone of voice, and am I to intervene at all if the council tries to do something to your sensei? The two people are Ayami Ichiraku and Anko Matarashi in the TNI division, and no, I don't think you'll need to, they need him to teach their precious Uchiha how to properly use his Sharingan, which he awoke there in wave, but that might be his only saving grace so you use your own judgment but don't expose yourself if unnecessary, he said in a similar tone. Yes here, she said before she vanished, it was then that was a knock at the door, Naruto. 
Lady Seraphore would like to see you in her office, I am to escort you there, a lovely voice said from behind the door. All right, be right out Mirage Jane, Naruto replied, as mother and son exit the room, they see Seraphore's queen, Mirage Jane Strauss, a beautiful white-haired young woman with large breasts, blue eyes, and wearing a black maid's outfit, it's good to see you again Kushina, I haven't you since before you brought your son to us. Mira said with her usual sweet smile. Sorry about that Mira, but I'm sure you understand that I have a lot of catching up to do with my baby boy, Kushina said sheepishly. Oh, it's fine, if I knew where my siblings were, it'd be going out looking for themselves, the she-devil responded. Hey mom, what about the money you and Minato had? I know for certain that they must be going after it, that is if they haven't been digging into the night of your deaths, Naruto asked as it popped in his head. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, I made sure to. Liberate it that night before the chaos settled down, I haven't put a dent in the account over the past 12 years, once I got here and put the massive funds into an account here, I've been living off the interest alone, so, you don't have to worry, we're very well off, whatever jobs we take later will only be a cushion to that, and knowing that minx of a familiar of yours, Shell go empty your personal account before the council learns of your death, the Red Death responded slyly. Nodding in acceptance of that, they walked in relative silence, all while Mira subtly checking out Naruto, something Kushina notices and clenches her fists, while grounding her teeth, damn it, why am I getting so frustrated and jealous when other girls check out or flirt with him? H is my son, I should nt even be getting jealous even if he is so much more handsome and powerful than that fool Minato, she thought, clearly at war with herself. Poor Kushina, she doesn't understand that because she wasn't able to be there to actually raise him. She doesn't truly see him as her son, but a very attractive young man, and while he is pleasing to the eye, H is not quite my type, especially with that cheerful personality was a mask, Mira thought catching Kushina's turmoil. Here we are, Naruto said breaking both ladies out of their thoughts, allowing Mira to go up to the door and knock. Milady, I've brought Naruto and Kushina, Seraphore's queen said loudly. Kushi's with him, very well, show them in, a muffled bubbly voice replied. In the room, Seraphore was dressed in her business top and ankle length dress. Giving her a professional but innocent look, ah, while I wasn't accepting you to come with Naru, Kushi dear, you being here will save us from trying to explain at a later date, you see, I was able to contact Shini, but the stubborn old goat wants to make the deal with Naru personally, however, I want you both to know, that this deal will involve requiring you to take a life, I know you said you would, but are you okay with that hun? She said professionally but everyone could hear the underlined concern. Naruto sighed but nodded, I hope that the target isn't some innocent, but it'll do the job. Seraphal nodded, you can come in now, Shini. As the side door opened, all the warmth of the room left, a rotted figure holding prayer beads and an absurdly long knife in either hand said, oh, for the love of, I've told you to stop calling me that. Then sigh so you're the one that this deal will affect, you haven't even taken your first life and gave your life in the noblest fashion, are you sure you can handle this, someone as pure-hearted you? Lord Shinigami, if it means that I can get stronger to protect those precious to me, then I will gladly dirty my hands, Naruto said seriously with a bow. The death god just sighs, that won't be necessary, I wanted to see if your intentions were pure or if they were sinister, you passed, you truly are the purest heart I've encountered, so, consider this an exchange for your noble sacrifice to save that Haku girl. Reaching into his stomach, the Shinigami pulls out Minato's soul and gives it form, however leaves Minato unconscious, come here Naruto, place your hand on your father's stomach and focus, you will need to focus in order to draw in the rest of your power, however, this will hurt, once you are done, I will wake Minato so you may say your peace, both of you, he said looking at both Naruto and Kushina, however, his soul will return to me as per his contract nodding Naruto kneed by his father's form and did as instructed. As he started, overwhelming pain coursed through him, but he grits his teeth and fought through the pain, 
his mother and mistress wanted nothing more than to hold and comfort him, but they knew they couldn't during this ritual, or they'd take in some of the fox's power, which would be poisonous to anyone else but Naruto, however, this would take a few hours and probably a couple of hours for Naruto to recover if he passes out afterward. Kanoa with Yoruichi, all right, I know I wasn't instructed to do so, but I sensed Kakashi and his team 30 minutes out, so I have 45 minutes before Haruzen calls for the council, I should go reclaim Naruto's money and grab anything of importance from his apartment, Yoruichi thought to herself. With that, she changed back into her cat form and made her way to the bank, at this hour everyone was unwinding for the night and growing lazy, making it easier for her to gather the information on her master's account and withdraw whatever he had left. Twenty minutes later she was in Naruto's apartment, geez, this is a style, even if it is clean, it looks like a place the homeless would use as a shelter, I can't believe Naru was paying to live here, she said aloud. Looking around she found his frog wallet that he seemed to forget for his mission, a picture he took with the Ichirakus, and a picture from before he was kicked out of the orphanage of him and a girl with her hair in panda buns, both holding out matching necklace both the gem separate halves, who is this? I've seen him wearing this necklace and got real protective of it when Haruzen tried to get him to throw it away since it appears broken, she thought, well whatever, I'm here to watch the reactions of the villagers and the council, so maybe I'll find out who this is, odd though that he never mentioned her in his orders. So, she packed up the wallet and the photos, and Ruth hopped towards the Hockage Tower and she did she noticed a girl a year older than Naruto with the same hairstyle as the photo wearing Chinese styled clothing entering the blacksmith shop, I wonder if that was the same girl, oh well, I will see later. Turns out she arrived at the Hockage's office at the perfect time as she lands on the windowsill and listens in on the conversation. In the office, R Team 7, welcome back, where's Naruto? Haruzen asked looking around the room. Kakashi flinched, while Sakura was fighting back tears, while Sasuke meanly scoffed, however, Kakashi spoke up in a defeated tone, I'm sorry Lord Hockage, but Jin and Naruto was killed on the mission. Explain, now, Haruzen shouted clearly enraged. Sakura now started crying, clearly upset at the loss of her blonde teammate. But Kakashi continued, the mission went beyond AC rank, we ran into the demon brothers of the mist, confronted our client about lying about the mission, but after an explanation, my team elected to continue and free wave from the tyrant Gato of Gato Industries, later we ran into Zabuza Momochi, demon of the mist, we defeated Zabuza with some quick thinking from Naruto when I was, regretfully captured by the enemy, to free me from Zabuza's water prison jutsu. After defeating Zabuza, a fake hunter Nin gathered the swordsman and disappeared with the body flicker technique, I passed due to overuse of my Sharingan, after I awoke, I realized we'd be running into Zabuza again after he recovered, so I trained my team in the tree climbing technique. Haruzen then interrupted the report with a snarl, you mean to tell me that after a month of having your team, you never taught them this technique? Much less the water walking technique, what have you been teaching your Jinan, Jonan Hitaki? Kakashi paled, I've been working on their teamwork, they couldn't stand each other, much less work together. You're lucky I don't demote you Hitaki, continue your report, the third Hokage said in a deathly calm voice that showed he was anything but calm from the killing intent he was leaking. Why yes here, during the week of training our clients, grandson said something about us not knowing suffering, Naruto blew up on the boy and left to train, apparently, Naruto met a young girl who happened to be the fake hunter Nin, and, fell in love at first sight, when Naruto returned that morning, I had noticed he seems a lot calmer, but I figured it was due to blowing off steam. Anyway, fast forward to the battle on the bridge, Sasuke fought the girl, while I engaged Tsubuza again, while Naruto was left at the client's house due to being exhausted from training, turns out the girl, who we discovered was called Hakuyuki, an ice release Keke Genkai user was beating Sasuke rather badly due to using some ice mirror jutsu and extreme speed to pelt him with Senbon. It was then that Naruto arrived on the scene after protecting the client's daughter from a kidnapping attempt, and while he did attempt to help Sasuke, they still were on the verge of losing, 
but Sasuke awakened the Sharingan and managed to save Naruto from being a pincushion, losing consciousness, making Naruto think he died. Enraged at the thought of Sasuke dying, Naruto called on his inner power to defeat the girl, only discover that it was the girl he fell in love with and stopped his assault. I don't know what was said, but as I was about to kill Zabuza, Haku used a mirror to get in front of my attack, only for Naruto to use the replacement technique with the girl and took my lightning blade in her place, dying shortly afterward, he explained, pausing to taking a moment to calm down. It was then we learned the events that lead to Naruto and Haku falling in love, and while Zabuza was explaining it, Haku was clutching Naruto's body tightly while crying her heart out, however, she didn't get the chance to mourn for long as the slimeball Gato appeared with 100 thugs, and ordered him to kill us males and spare the girls to turn into sex slaves, he wanted Haku to personally break due to apparently breaking his wrist. Needless to say, Haku was beyond pissed. She took charge and ordered the client and Sakura to guard Naruto's body under the pain of death. However sometime during the fight, Naruto's body disappeared. Back at the client's house, Sakura and I had to restrain Haku from killing Tazuna. Especially since we still on a mission. It was then that a mysterious dark-skinned, admittedly gorgeous woman walked in and said she wished to talk to Haku. Before I could stop her from leaving, they disappeared in a burst of speed, I don't know what was said but when the girl returned, she was noticeably in a better mood, when Zabuza asked what happened, she didn't say anything but glared at Tazuna before going upstairs, we completed our mission once the villagers all worked together to complete the bridge in record time, they even named the bridge after our fallen blonde. Haruzan took in the report, so, Naruto gave his life for love, even if that love was, at this time an enemy, am I understanding this correctly? Yes, Lord Hokage, Kakashi said sadly, looking at his right hand that pierced his sensei's son's chest. Anbu. Summon the council, we need to inform them of this development, the professor said as the hidden Anbu disappeared to gather the council, Kakashi, you are required there. Your fate will be decided then, you'd better hope Jin and Uchiha's Sharingan awaken is enough to spare you. Kakashi nodded, no one noticing the black cat outside the window. Council chambers, 30 minutes later, during the time it took the council to gather, Yoruichi was able to grab the scrolls from behind the safe behind Minato's portrait and put everything back, leaving no evidence of her visit. As the council gather, no one, not even the Anbu guarding Haruzan seemed to notice her slip in and hide in the rafters. Once everyone was there, Haruzan stood up, I apologize for calling you all at this hour, but it has come to my attention that we have lost a very important shinobi on a recent mission. It was then that everyone murmured, but Danzo asked the question everyone was murmuring about, Haruzan, which of our shinobi are you referring to? The professor glared, that's Lord Hokage, advisor Shimura. And to answer your question, it was Jin and Naruto Uzumaki, Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed Fox. It was then that the civilian side celebrated, shouting the demon is dead, and we should have a festival to celebrate, but was silenced from the combined key, killing intent, coming from the Hokage and the Shinobi side of the council. It was Sume, head of the Inazuka clan that stood up and asked with concern and loss in her voice, Lord Hokage, how was the pup killed? Let it be known that Sume was a close friend of Kushina's and constantly tried to adopt Naruto only to be turned down every time. As were most of the clan heads friends with Minato and Kushina and knew Naruto was their kid. So, Haruzan gave the same mission report that Kakashi did, causing the shinobi council to frown, conflicted about the news, Naruto gave his life for a noble reason of love, but the love was, at that time, for an enemy, while the elders glared at Kakashi for killing their weapon, and civilians were congratulating Kakashi for ridding him of the demon child. Silence. We are gathered to determine Jonan Kakashi Hitaki's fate, he has killed a fellow shinobi, even unwillingly, and as some may know, this isn't the first time H has done so, again, against his will, Haruzan shouted. Lord Hokage, Hitaki should be removed as a Jonan instructor but take Lord Uchiha as his apprentice to teach him everything he knows about the Sharingan, Danzo said, however, after he was completed Lord Uchiha's training, 
he should be executed for killing the Jinchuriki. He was not just a J-I-N-C-H-U-R-I-K-I. -I. He was my S-E-N-S-E-I-S -E son. He gave his life for love. Kakashi had enough of them referring to Naruto in such a way, not realizing H has just revealed a massive secret to the council. However, the elders, and the civilians, and the clan heads that didn't know were stunned at what the copy ninja said and erupted in shouts of denial and outrage, however it was Kenshi Higarashi, member of the civilian council, Tenton's father, and owner of the best shinobi outfitting shop that spoke yelled Haruzen. What is the meaning of this? Is it true that prankster was the son of the honored fourth Hokage? Yes, had we known. We would have approved of his training when brought to us, Koharu Utatane, the only female member of the Elder Council asked. Haruzen sighed and face-palmed, yes, it's true, Naruto Uzumaki was the son of Minato Namikaze as well as Kushina Uzumaki. You were not informed to keep such information from reach the rock or the cloud. Had the Suchikage or the Raikage learned that Minato and Kushina had a son? There would be no end to the assassination attempts from the stone for what Minato did during the war and no end to the kidnapping attempts from the cloud simply because of him being their son and the possibly the last male Uzumaki, yes, before you lose yourselves again, the Uzumaki was a clan and ally to our village, it is their symbol on the back of our Chunin and Jonin vests, and the swirl of our headbands, they were lost to us in the last shinobi war. Lord Hockage, on the subject of the Uzumaki, why is it that lessons of the Uzumaki clan were removed from the academy when an Uzumaki, Lady Mito Uzumaki, was the wife to Lord Hashirama, the first Hokage, as well as Lady Kushina, the Red Death, or as the civilians may know her as, the Red Hot Habanero, was a very prominent shinobi, Shikaku Nara asked. This is the first I've heard of this, would the elders or the civilian council like to say anything, Haruzen said glaring around the room. We couldn't let that demon know he was a part of such a dangerous clan, after all, it took the efforts of three shinobi nations to wipe him out, Omura Maitakado, one of Haruzen's teammates and member of the elder council, said earning nods from the other elders. That's enough. Let me remind you that my law is still in effect, Haruzen said, to go behind my back, and alter the academy curriculum and remove the history of our time-honored ally, you're lucky I don't have Anbu execute you now, as a matter of fact, I am retaking control of this village, this is a shinobi village, and as Hokage, my word is law, as such, I hereby disband the civilian and elder council, the clan heads and I will run this village as it should be. You can't do this Haruzen. You need us. Mebuki Haruno, Sakura's mother screeched. You're making a mistake you old fool, Danzo said dangerously. Anbu. Escort these fools out of the room before I start ordering executions, the god of Shinobi said sternly, leave Kenchi Higarashi here, I wish to speak with him. As the Anbu appeared and started escorting those mentioned out of the room, Danzo glared at the Hokage, you'll pay for this Haruzen, he declared before vanishing. Once the rabble was out of the room, Haruzen sat down and sighed, now, what should do about Kakashi? He asked the remaining council. Pardon me, Lord Hockage, why was I allowed to remain? The blacksmith asked. You are the only one that showed concern for Naruto, and as I understand it, you adopted young Tenton from the orphanage, but what you may not know is that she was young Naruto's only friend in the orphanage, it wager she has a necklace she is highly possessive of but has no idea why it's so important, am I right? The Hockage asked with a knowing smirk. You mean that necklace with a broken gem tied within? Yeah, she only takes the thing off if she showers or is in the forge and if she loses it, she loses her mind, saying stuff like I have to find it. It was given to me by someone very important. I thought it was nonsense, but if you are saying what I think you are, it was given to her by Naruto, wasn't it? Yes, Naruto had a matching one, only he never took it off due to it being his most precious possession. I asked him about it once and he said it was important. A symbolization of a promise to his only friend, Panda from the orphanage, that they'd always remember each other, however, it would seem that growing up with a loving family, friends, and all her training, 
she has unconsciously forgotten him but knows the importance of the necklace, it took me a while to figure out that Panda was Tenten, Haruzan said solemnly. Kenchi sighed, that would explain why when she was younger, she would say that she wanted to see Foxy again, but I couldn't help her find him due to not knowing his actual name, I should have known it was Naruto. It was then that Kakashi coughed, um not to be rude, but can we get back to the purpose of this meeting? Yes, of course, cast your votes now, Haruzan said. After a short while, each nodded and motioned for the Nara clan to voice their vote. Kakashi Hitaki, we have voted for you to remain Team 7's Jonan Sensei. However, you are to train him into the ground once we add one of the reserves Jinan to your team. However, as punishment for killing the heir of the Uzumaki clan, you are hereby banned from reading your Itcha Itcha in public ever again, he said before turning to the Hockage, at the same time Lord Hockage, we request young Naruto to be added to the memorial stone, while he did save an enemy, he gave his life for the noblest of reasons, for love, something any of us would have done in his place. Granted, the professor said solemnly before addressing Kakashi Kakashi, speaking of this love, where is the young lady that he gave his life for? She decided to remain in Wave to protect the village he fought so hard to liberate and said she would not come to a village that ostracized her love, the copy ninja said solemnly. This earned nods of understanding and acceptance from the council and Haruzan side. While I understand that, I would have liked to meet her, Naruto was like a grandson to me, I will announce his death and his heritage to the village in the morning, everyone, go home and tell your families to gather out in front of this tower, Anbu, inform the village to do the same. How interesting, so the girl with panda buns is important to Naruto, it's shame that she unconsciously forgot him, but still remembers the importance of the necklace, I will mention this to master, Yoruichi thought as stretched out in her cat form, looks like I need to wait till morning to complete my mission. Next morning, the entire village gathered around the Hockage Tower, Haruzan was on top, however, this noticed the black laying on the railing, what's this cat doing here? Oh well, Haruzan thought before address the crowd, citizens of Kanoa. I called you here for two reasons. He became getting murmurs from everyone, this a few days ago we lost one of our new genin on a mission, no you may be wonder why I am announcing the death of a mere genin, however, this genin was important to the village in more ways than one. I suppose what he may be most known as by the older generation as the Jinchiriki of the Nine-Tailed Fox, however, this genin is more important than to this village. As the village heard mention of the fox, they were about to celebrate, but when they heard he was more important than being the fox, they were curious, however, they were not expecting what came next. Jinan Naruto Uzumaki, the Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed, was the son of the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, and Kushina Uzumaki, the Red Death, and the Red Hot Habanaro, the third Hokage exclaimed earning shouts of disbelief, however, those that knew the two, knew it to be true and were devastated that their sons was dead. The Ichirakis were in shock, they couldn't believe Naruto was dead, Ayami openly cried, as did Hinata, Anko, and Tenten, even though she didn't understand why she was crying and clutching her necklace, those rookies who graduated with Naruto were in disbelief that Naruto was the son of someone so important and that he held such a burden. Now, before you disperse, I will warn you, Naruto is to be honored as the hero Minato wanted his son to be seen as, and if you're thinking Naruto was the fox, let me ask you this, if you seal a kunai in a scroll, does the scroll become the kunai? That said, if I found out that any celebrations take place for the death of the demon, those who attend will be executed and the organizers will be sent to the loving, tender care of Ibaki and Anko of the TNI division, have a nice day, the professor said with a smirk. Well done Haruzan, I can see that you did care for my master, however, I cannot tell you that he is alive, since you are the leader of the village and will do everything you can to get him back, now, to inform those who were listed, however, that Hugo girl cannot know, it would break her heart to know that Naruto's heart is taken, she thought as she stretched and went to deliver the message to the listed people. What she didn't notice was poor Tenton in a daze with her father, clutching her necklace, unconsciously muttering Foxy, why, 
you can't be dead. Come on my little panda, let's get you home, Kenshi said, not expecting his daughter to lash out at him. Don't call me panda. Only Foxy can call me that. Tenton screamed at him before crying even harder not knowing why or what she just said. She subconsciously remembers Naruto. I wonder what's keeping those memories from coming forward. The blacksmith thought, could it be some trauma from the orphanage? I know it was closed down after Naruto was kicked out due to the hockage being so close to the boy. But what could have happened there to cause her to repress memories? I'll talk to the hockage and find out later. For now, I need to get her home. Ichiraku Ramen. Well, this is convenient. Yoruichi thought she was in her human form, fully dressed of course, at the ramen shop was Anko, having her fellow pariah special, while Ayami, who would normally be cooking with her father was having a bowl as well. Oh, sorry miss, were actually closed, were mourning the close of a close friend and family member, Chuchi said solemnly. Actually, I'm here with news that might brighten your day, mind if I have one of what you two are having, she asked. Dad. Please, close the shutters so we can hear this. I feel it's going to be some sensitive information, Ayami asked. Her father nodded and did as asked, then went to prepare the mysterious woman's order. Here you are, one Naruto special, now, what's this news? I want you to know that the woman with lavender hair, wearing the trench coat is with the tea and I and very skilled at torture, the ramen chef said seriously. Oh, I'm very well aware. Anko Matarashi, known as the Snake Mistress, a rank Kunoichi, second in command of the TNI division, she said as talking about the weather causing Anko to go on edge, easy, as I'm not your enemy, I'm a friend. The dark-skinned beautiful sampled her ramen, this is delicious. I can see why he likes this so much. Wait, likes. Enough pussyfooting around or my snakes and I are going to have some fun with you, Anko said getting angry. As fun as some bondage would be, ill pass. As I said I'm here with good news, however, as I army surmised, what I'm about to be said cannot be told to anyone else, not even the hockage, Yoruichi said earning a gasp from I army and glare from Anko. You realize that you're asking me to commit treason for withholding information, right? The snake mistress asked seriously. Of course, but if you don't want to hear this then you're free to leave. The Nekomata merely shrugged. Now if you're done bitching and sizing me up can I tell get on with my message. Seeing she had their attention she nodded. While it is true Naruto died in the land of wave on his mission. What you didn't know is that he sacrificed himself for love. He fell in love with a girl who at the time was his enemy. But neither cared. He took an attack meant for her. Dying in the process. However, before you get all angry or sad and lash out at me. I'm from somewhere that has the ability to bring the dead back to life and not as living puppets like your former sensei is trying to do. I mean truly back to life, there is a catch, that person lives as a devil. In Naruto's case, H is half devil, half Katsune, you see when he was revived. His chakra merged with the foxes, causing him to essentially become the new nine-tailed fox. Only he will never be able to be sealed within anything. His power is enormous and that's before he started the ritual to get the other half of the Nine Tails' power. H is going to be unstoppable, him in his service as his familiar, once he gets more experience and prestige, he can get his own tools to resurrect people as devils, so, keep quiet and he may come to ask you to join him, talk, and you'll prove you were never truly his friend, she explained as she had her meal, thanks for the meal, but I must be off, and remember not a word, well be watching, and disappeared. He is alive, I army said disbelievingly, from what I understood, H is now, a devil, and the new nine tails. And will come for us if we keep quiet, if it's all of us or just one of us, she wasn't clear, we never got her name, I'm's are going to get into trouble if anyone finds out, but I'm going to keep quiet, I'll miss the little prankster, but he was just like me, an outcast, and one of my few real friends, Anko said scratching the back of her head, for now, we need to go on like we didn't hear this news or people will know something's up. Back with Naruto, Uza Shiagakure, Seraphal's office. Yoruichi appeared in the office just as Naruto was waking up and could feel the difference, Satan Almighty, 
his power was intoxicating before, now it downright an aphrodisiac, and I'm not the only one fighting the effects of his power, she thought, fighting herself to stop herself from jumping Adonis bones, and she was right, both Kushina and Seraphor were both rubbing their thighs together, trying to fight off the same urge. This is going to be torture to focus on his training, and not on how to get him fuck me into a coma, was the thought shared by the three women in the room. How long was I out? Was all Naruto could ask, noticing his voice was deeper and his new clothes seemed too small again, just great, I grew again, Grafia and Sorex just got me these two, and grow he did, his muscle mass doubled, he grew at least half a foot and judging from the blushes on the ladies in the room and how they were looking at him like he was lunch, H's member grew as well, by how much he didn't know, nor did he care right now. Ah, you're finally awake, I wasn't expecting it that long for you to recover, I suppose to a combination of your chakra and foxes along with your devil magic took longer than expected, the Shinigami said snapping the women out of their dazzers and drawing everyone's attention to the death god, I'm going awake and Minato now, you have one hour to say when you need to then I'm taking him back. With that Minato woke and sat up, ha, huh, where am I? He said before noticing Kushina in the room, Kushina, what you are doing here? Hello father, Naruto said as his godly power flared a little, scaring Minato and causing the women to almost orgasm. Ninetales, wait, father, Minato said not believing it, Naruto what happened? Why did take on the fox's appearance? That's the first thing you have to say to your son? You're pathetic, I took on the appearance because I absorbed the fox's full power, yes even the half inside that was inside of you, I had to die and be resurrected as a devil to do so though, Naruto said at the gawking yellow flash, you truly didn't love your family, did you? You only cared about keeping the fox within Kanoa. You thought as a hawkage before you thought as a husband or father. TCH. Damn that senile old fool. Danzo couldn't get to you before that idealist Haruzan did. Could he, even after organizing with that Madara wannabe, Minato said before turning to Kushina, you were supposed to die with me that night and be harvested to make artificial Uzumakis, it was torture to pretend to love you. But you did your job and gave birth to a son, but unfortunately, Haruzan got to him first, hopefully, Danzo at least did everything he could make your life a living hell. Naruto's power flared even more, oh, he did all right? Fortunately for me, Lord Third was there to counter most of it and had Kakashi, Yugao, and even Itachi guarding me as Anbu before he murdered everyone in his clan but that stuck up asshole Sasuke for whatever reason. Who knows what would have happened if not for those three. I could have beaten, stabbed, clubbed, burnt half to death, even raped. Damn that Kakashi, he was supposed to help undermine your life. Someone must have found the seal I place on him, Minato growled. You don't think I don't know you never loved me. I woke up the morning after you got me pregnant to find a wet partial seal on my inner thigh, you messed up Minato, but I played along for the safety of my possible future baby, Kushina said coldly, in the one that removed Kakashi's seal while he was guarding me, you forget you caught you everything on you know about seals. Damn you slut. I should have made sure to break you properly. That doesn't explain how you're alive. The asshole blonde shouted. That would be my handy work, you meanie. Seraphol said drawing his attention. I am Seraphol Leviathan, one of four Satan that run the underworld or as you know it, hell. I happened to be in the area investigating a giant power that turned out to be Foxy but saw Kushi here dying, so I offered to save her life by resurrecting her into a devil, however, in doing so I guess I kinda helped you in your attempt to make Naru into a weapon for that village, how I did it won't matter to you since you're about to return to your eternal home. Minato looked at the busty lowly in front of him curiously before turning around and freezes on the spot, no, no. I don't want to return to the stomach. Too bad mortal, you made a deal your soul in order to seal the fox within your son. It's not my fault he managed to absorb it, Shini said with a smirk before turning to address the mother and son. Have you said everything you need to? Get him out of my sight, make sure to make his eternal torture even more painful for us, Naruto said with a snarl, reigning in his power, earning a nod of agreement from his mother. 
Very well. Have a long and happy life you too, the death god said before eating Minato again and vanishing into the void. Well, that was entertaining. Your father was a real asshole master, Yoruichi spoke up. I have everything you asked for and some you didn't, she said hanging the scrolls containing everything. I grabbed the funds from your account, your frog wallet, and your valuables from that shithole you called an apartment as well as what you told me too. But from what I just heard, I suspect that Minato's scroll wasn't done by him, was it? She asked Kushina. No, he did leave stuff for his son. Probably for once he was well and truly broken and turned into a weapon, Kushina said with a shrug. Well, let's find out what that bastard left, and thank you Yoruichi for gathering stuff, I just hope you got the photos, one of them is especially important, Naruto said quietly. The one of you and Panda from the orphanage? Yeah, I overhead that you and this Tenton were close in the orphanage, your only friend if I remember correctly, she said as Naruto blushed out of embarrassment. How is she? Was all he could ask, shush is fine, a genin just like you were. But whatever you guys went through at the orphanage did a number on her. But she doesn't consciously remember you. But throws a fit if she loses that necklace of hers. So, she does subconsciously remember you and with a little work you could help her remember you. The flirtatious familiar said solemnly. Nodding he simply used his blood to open the scroll of that asshole that sighed him. Out came a scroll containing notes on the flying Raijin Jutsu and the Rasengan, his signature Jutsus, that figures, he wanted a weapon that surpasses him, so he left his best Jutsu for me, Naruto scoffed. Open mine hun, there's a family heirloom within, Kushina said excitedly. I'm okay, he said but does as asked. Out of the scroll was a beautiful katana and books on Fuinjutsu. Don't open the blade yet. It casts a genjutsu that turns the skies crimson, instilling fear into your opponents and instills confidence and courage into your allies. It's the real reason I was given the name Red Death, she said proudly. That's awesome mom. Can't wait to learn how to use it properly, Naruto said hugging his mom. So Naru, seems we have your training set. Fuinjutsu, chakra control, kenjutsu, and learning to control your magic power, and a few spells to go along with it, as well as ninjutsu, oh, your gonna so much stronger than even Trihexa, and that nasty was strong enough to take out the original Satans and even the biblical big guy. Seraphal said excitingly practically bouncing on her heels. It was then that there was a knock on the door, Lady Seraphal, it's time to go. You're scheduled to be on the set for your show in 20 minutes, a voice came from behind the door. Oh Fui, well come on in introduce yourself to your fellow peerage members Callan, Seraphal said with a pout, I've got her for now, I'll see you later Naru, Kushi, Mira, Neko, please take care of his training, bye, she said as she disappeared in a magic circle. A red-headed teenager with a wild hairstyle came in, wearing short biker pants and a tight holster top that seemed to outline her marvelous breasts while exposing her toned stomach, she had a lighter shade of blue than Naruto used to have for eyes, she seemed to notice Naruto checking her out and covered herself eyes to yourself pervert. Naruto chuckled nervously, sorry about that, seems like every girl around her is stunningly beautiful, you could be considered goddesses if you weren't devils. Flattery won't get you anywhere, she said with a blush, he is rather attractive though, much better than Lelouch, and the power H is radiating is driving me nuts, just who is this guy? She thought before coughing, anyway, Im Kalan Kazuki, Lady Seraphal's pawn. Nice to meet you, Im Naruto Uzumaki, Kushina's son and Sira's rook, she said something about using her mutated rook on me. I don't know what that means though, the new Katsune said. Holy shit. Well that partly explains the power coming off you, she spoke softly, anyway, it'll be helping with your training as well, and don't get any stupid ideas, she said with a glare. Naruto was sitting at a dress in his room looking over the books on Fuinjutsu. And surprisingly, surprisingly, he understood it as if it was ingrained into him from birth. He had gotten new clothes from Mirajane, hanging up was a black trench coat with orange liner on the inside the Citri and Uzumaki symbols on the same shoulders as before, but he was wearing new track pants of the same color, 
and a form-fitting muscle shirt that clung to his muscular body, all of which has seals on them that would repair themselves if damaged, and grow alongside him until he reaches his prime, and which point hell stop growing and aging. After finishing the first book, he realized he didn't get a full report from Yoruichi, so, turning to the seductive Nekomata, who was currently in her cat form and napping on his bed, he clears his throat to get her attention, knowing that she was always alert just in case. Hearing her master, she stretched out and yawned, yes master, what is it? She asked in a groggy tone. I just realized that I never got your full report on Kanoa, but before that, could you go get my mom? I would like for her to hear this as well rather than trying to explain it again to her later, and I don't think she should busy right now, he requested, earning a nod in return. Five minutes later, Yoruichi returned in her human form, fully dressed, with Kushina, Naruto. Why did you have Yoruichi come get me? Kushina asked. Naruto smiled, walked up to her, and gave her a hug, one she readily returned. I just thought you'd like to hear her report on Kanoa firsthand, especially since I don't want to keep anything from you mom, he said as he released the hug. Kushina blushed lightly at that statement but nodded fighting down her blush, damn, why did my son have to be so buff, you could grind cheese on those things, she thought, fighting her arousal as well. Lucky bitch, Yoruichi thought but calmed herself before addressing the mother and son, if you two would have a seat, ill begin, it is kind of lengthy. The Uzumakis nodded and sat down, Naruto at his desk, Kushina on the edge of the desk with her legs crossed, Mom, you sure you'll be comfortable there? He asked. It'll be fine dear, at least for a while, if I need to, I'll move to your bed, she replied reassuringly. If you're ready, I'll begin, Yoruichi said gridding her teeth slightly, calm down Yoruichi, H is the last male Uzumaki that we know of, and harems are common amongst the devil culture, I just have to wait till he becomes a high class devil officially, she thought to herself before continuing. As I stated before the remainder of Team 7 talked with Haruzan, I liberated your finances and special effects, I arrived at the window outside of the Hokage's window just in time for the report, Kakashi looks as if killing you was eating him up from the inside, the Uchiha didn't care, and Haruno was upset and crying, when Kakashi informed him that you were killed, Haruzan was, well angry is an understatement, he was furious. While giving his report, the Hokage was furious at how little he had taught you and your team while saying that you were ready for the mission, but were obviously not, even saying that Kakashi was lucky he didn't demote him. As the report continued, Haruzan seemed conflicted about you falling for an enemy during the mission but didn't say anything more about it before calling for the council for a meeting, as predicted. During that time, I gathered your inheritance and made it to council chambers undetected, once the meeting started and Haruzan informed everyone of your death, most of the civilian council celebrated before Haruzan and the Shinobi council released an impressive amount of killing intent, shutting him up. It was the head of the Inazuka clan, Sume, that asked how you died, she said before being interrupted by Kushina. Of course, Shed asked, besides Mikoto, Sume was my best friend, I'm sure she did what she should support you from the shadows even if her pervert of a son didn't like you. Hell I'm sure she fought tooth and nail to try to adopt you only for the council to shut her down, probably claiming she was trying to gain more power for her claim, the redhead said with a scoff at the end. Yes, well, Haruzan gave Kakashi's report, and there were mixed reactions, again most of the civilians congratulating Kakashi, the shinobi side conflicted for the same reasons as Haruzan, and the elder were angry that Kakashi killed their weapon. However, Haruzan silenced everyone, telling them that they were there to decide Kakashi's fate. It was then that some old fossil by the name of Danzo Shimura suggested that Team 7 be disbanded and the Uchiha was taken into an apprenticeship. Kakashi had enough and revealed who your father was to the entire council in a fit of rage and that you weren't just the Jinchuriki. Naturally, this caused the entire council to erupt both with denial and disbelief, but it was Tenton's father that asked why such information wasn't released to them and the only woman on the Elder Council said your training would have been approved when brought to them. However, Haruzan explained that had such information gotten out, 
there would have been a shortage of assassination attempts from the hidden stone. And since the Hokage revealed that, you, Kushina are his mother, that the hidden cloud wouldn't stop their kidnapping attempts, even confirming that the Uzumakis were a clan to the civilians, and learned it was the elders that removed that knowledge from the curriculum at the academy, all to hamper your development master, she said, pausing to catch her breath and see Kushina outraged, her hair flailing around as if they were nine tails and Naruto just sighing. So, that's the Hokage's reasoning for not telling me. Probably thought it'd scream who my parents were at the top of my lungs from at top of Hokage Mountain, Naruto said disappointedly. To be fair master, even if it was a mask, you were a very excitable child, I can see why Haruzen was hesitant to tell you, the dark-skinned goddess said with a smirk. Okay, fine. Still wouldn't have hurt him to at least know that I was loved, he said pouting. Anyway, getting on with the report, after learning about this Haruzen was enraged and finally had enough and disbanded the civilian and elder councils. Leaving only Tenton's father in the room, with Danzo making promises that the Hockage would regret his discussion, after everyone was escorted from the room, Kenshi, Tenton's father, asked why he was allowed to say, this is when I learned or rather got confirmed, that the girl with panda buns was someone precious to you and that she has repressed memories. However, before they could say why it is Haruzen didn't help reunite you two. Kakashi brought the meeting back to its original purposes, obviously feeling out of place and anxious about his sentence, his sentence was light, all things considered, a reserve member of the Genin forces was to be added to Team 7, but forced to never read his smut in public again, the council also requested your name be added to the memorial stone since you died in combat and for a noble reason such as love, Yoruichi said before being interrupted again by a knock at the door. In came Mira, carrying a tray of tea, sorry to interrupt, but I knew Naruto was reading the Fuinjutsu books and thought he could use some refreshments, and knowing you'd be here guarding him, I brought a cup for you as well Yoruichi, and on the off chance you were helping your son, I brought a cup for you as well. Oh, thank you, Mira, tea actually sounds amazing right now, Naruto said gratefully, with Yoruichi nodding in agreement, her throat was getting a little raw from talking so long without a drink, so she didn't mind the interruption this time. Think nothing of it, it'll be off now, feel free to call for me if you need anything else, Mira said leaving the tea on the desk before leaving the room. After grabbing some tea and taking a sip, the flirtatious Nekomata continued. My report now fast forwards to the next morning, Haruzen had ordered the village to gather around the Hockage Tower. There he revealed that you died, who your parents are, and warned the villagers that anyone who celebrated your death would be killed on sight and the organizers of the events would be in the tender loving embrace of Ibaki and Anko. And told everyone what Minato had said before he passed away that he wanted you to be seen as a hero and they couldn't tell the difference between a scroll and the kunai it was sealed in before dismissing everyone. I could see Ayami, Tenton who was clutching her necklace subconsciously, Anko, and the shy Hugo girl from your class all crying openly, the rest of the rookies aside from the Uchiha were in shock, whether it was in shock that you weren't some clanless nobody or that you died and that you held such an enormous burden, as for your friends, Kushina, they were devastated. I was fortunate to find everyone you requested at Ichirakus Ramen. They did try to push me away saying it was a private gathering and the shop was closed for the day for mourning. But once I said I was there with news that could brighten their day, they closed the shutters and gave me what I ordered, your special, after their attempt at intimidating me using Anko's profession against me, I told them everything after telling them they couldn't tell anyone, even the hockage, they took it as expected, shock and awe, trying to wrap their heads around what I said, but said they'd keep quiet in hopes to see you again she finishes her report as well as her tea. Naruto and Kushina thought about the report, so, the old man did care and was under the impression Minato did love me, he really wasn't putting on an act, he really was like a grandpa to me, Naruto said, fighting back tears. And while most of your classmates are still figuring out what to do, your panda remembers you subconsciously, and co-care enough for you to keep your secret from the hockage, same could be said of the Ichirakus, though that's not surprising given our family's history with them, Kushina in a soothing tone, 
moving behind the desk to hug her son to comfort him. And, whether you believe it or not Kakashi cared enough to stand up for you and, surprisingly that abusive girl cared enough to cry over your death, you are truly lucky, master, the dark-skinned beauty said, following Kushina's lead and hugging him from the other side. Three-year time skip, we find Naruto in his own home. At his desk in his study, it has been half a year since Naruto officially became a high-class devil. During that time he sent weekly letters to Haku and Anko, who then shared the letter with Ayami, however, six months into his training, he received a letter from Anko via her snakes, informing him that Haruzan Sarutobi, the third Hokage, was killed in action during Orochimaru's invasion, which took place during the Chunin exams causing Naruto to discreetly return to Kanoa to attend Haruzan's funeral. After Jiraiya failed to convince Tsunade to return to the village to become Hokage, she did, however, agree to return and head up the hospital after hearing about extreme cases like Rock Lee, forcing him to train someone to replace him as the village's spymaster and take up the seat of Hokage. Speaking of the perverted hermit, Naruto heard that Jiraiya raised hell when he received word that he died. This confused Naruto since he never even heard of the Toad Sage beforehand. But his mother told him that Jiraiya was named his godfather by Minato since they got his name from the first and only non-smutty book that the Toad Sani never wrote, and was also Minato's sensei. This pissed the new Nine Tails off so much, that his power erupted with so much force that the entire island shook, and the barrier barely able to within the unbridled power until Kushina calmed him down, promising him they'd make the pervy sage pay for abandoning his duties as godfather. Haku had been in Kanoa during the month break of the exams to meet Haruzan after receiving a message from the old monkey wishing to meet the young woman that won his surrogate grandson's heart. Naturally, she was hesitant to go but decided to hear out the third hockage, the meeting went very well, and Haku got to learn about Naruto's pranks and the people that truly cared for him. So, during her visit, she paid a visit to Ichirakus Ramen where, like Yoruichi, ran into not only Anko but Sakura as well. Sakura had greeted Haku like an old friend, while Anko measured her up before nodding her head and greeting the girl that won her whiskers heart, and Ayami personally greeted her before she found out this girl was the one Naruto gave his life for and started shouting and trying to attack the ice user for being responsible for her brother figure's death before being dragged to the back room by her father while Chuchi was more than happy to serve Haku and apologized for his daughter's behavior. Haku had just waved it off and understood, having caught on to look in their eyes that told her that they knew as well that Naruto was alive, but were keeping up appearances of still mourning for their friend. Afterward, she returned to wave, and continued to live with Tazuna and his family, which in the beginning was tense given what happened during the building of the bridge but got better over time after she apologized for her behavior and promised to stay behind to protect the village full time, while Zabuza went back to the rebellion in the land of water. As for Tenton, she was getting headaches once a year, on October 10th, as if the memory of Naruto was trying to force itself to the surface, thus she locked herself in her room, crying and calling out for her foxy. As for the village itself, October 10th was celebrated as a national holiday, which was celebrated differently depending on the person, the rookies minus Sasuke joined in with the part of the village that celebrated Naruto's birthday, the birth of a hero, while the people in denial of Naruto's heritage continued to celebrate it as the day of sacrifice, hailing Minato as the hero and would light wooden fox statues on fire in their celebrations. After what happened in Wave, Sakura took her training seriously stopped dieting, and actually started to fill out, almost at an alarming rate. As if her body was thanking her for finally taking care of herself properly. She trained with Kurnai in Genjutsu, studied at the hospital with Tsunade for medical training. And even joined Mike Guy and his team in their ridiculous Taijutsu training sessions where she met Rock Lee. At first, he weirded her out with the green spandex and caterpillar eyebrows but accepted him after he saved her in the forest of death, as well as saving her from Gara in the invasion, it wasn't until Lee was almost killed by the one-tailed Jinchuriki during the preliminary round that she started to have feelings for Lee, over the two years of getting to know each other, they started dating. 
Naruto's training itself was grueling. He got used to the new power his body contained. His taijutsu was roughed out and could give even Mike Guy a run for his money without the eight inner gates. His ninjutsu was extraordinarily powerful, especially with his perfected the Rasen's hurricane. His genjutsu casting abilities were crap, but he could dispel just about any that was cast against him. His kenjutsu now surpassed Kushina's abilities. His Fuinjutsu put him on a level only seen by the likes of Mito Uzumaki or even earlier. As for his devil magic, he was stronger than even Sarex, the strongest among the four Satans, which was proven during his exam to be a high-class devil, where he had to fight all four of them and came out just barely breathing hard. During the training though, he had grown closer to his mother, whom he has stopped thinking of as such, Yoruichi, Seraphol, and Kalan. Mira was the only one that he wasn't close to but remained on friendly terms nonetheless, he, after explaining his situation and promising to make her his queen, he had gotten permission from Haku to begin dating the four. One day he became an official high-class devil. He sent Yoruichi to retrieve his first real love in order to keep his promise and bring Haku in as his queen. Excuse me, my love? Lady Seraphol is requesting our presence at Satan's Tower, Haku's voice called out from behind the door, breaking him out of his trip down memory lane. All right, thank you, my queen. Have you informed Kushina, Kalan, and Yoruichi? He said as he grabbed his trench coat, yes, Kushina and Kalan had been traded to Naruto the day of his promotion at their request, they would, however, help Sarah fall should she ever require it if she ever entered rating game, however unlikely that may be. Yes sir. They are waiting in the foyer, she said opening the door to hold open the door, Haku has been training with Grafia in how to be a proper queen to serve a powerful king, it helped that both Haku and Grafia had ice powers so there was a lot she could help with, and with any luck, Haku could surpass the strongest queen. Thank you, let's go see what Sarah wants, it must be important if we were asked to go to the tower, the redhead said nonchalantly as he grabbed his sword and strapped it to his back. It was the same sword that he received from Kushina, he did try to return it during training, but she said she had another sword crafted during the 14 years she was there. Please take this seriously, it's not just Lady Seraphol, but the other Satans that are calling us, who knows, it might be time for the big reveal, she smiled. Naruto just shrugged and walked with his queen towards the foyer of his own mansion, a gift from the Satans for defeating him so easily. Once in the foyer, Kushina was dressed in her combat gear. The same gear she rescued Naruto in, Kalan was dressed in a red turtleneck halter top. With a brown leather vest that encompasses and empathizes her impressive bust that still leaves room to show her toned stomach. And brown short shorts, with thigh-high boots and white arm coverings from her biceps down to her wrists with a red headband on, and Yoruichi in her usual travel clothes, Yoruichi had gotten the message to be dressed in her human form around the girls after a beatdown by Kalan, Kushina, and Seraphol after her nakedness caused interruptions in Naruto's training sessions. Ah, you all seem ready to go. How shall we get there? Walk or use the transportation spell? Naruto asked after looking over his girls. Well master, it'd say if the Satans are summoning us, I'd be rude to keep them waiting. Yoruichi said respectfully. I must agree, while Lady Sarah might not care if we took our time, Lord Sarex and Lord Ajuka are not the patient type, Kushina added. Nodding in acknowledgement, Naruto and Haku stepped in the middle of the small group and prepared the spell before disappearing in a flash of orange. Satan Tower, Mission Room, appearing in the same flash of orange, each member of Naruto's peerage and his familiar bowed to the Satans, while Naruto just gave them a mock salute. Uzumaki clan reporting my lords and lady, Naruto said respectfully. Welcome Uzumakis, we have an important mission for you and your peerage. It seems forces outside of our control have forced we devils to reveal ourselves a year early, Sarek said firmly. You see Naru, some big nasty demon by the name of Morio is trying to resurrect himself and he has some cultists attempting to help him in that task as well as kill the priestess in the land of Orge that has the power to seal Morio away again, 
Seraphal said in her usual bubbly tone. And with you being our strongest peerage at the moment despite the fact you only have four members, it might prove a good chance for you to recruit more members, we intercepted a message saying that the Hidden Leaf will be sending their team guy, consisting of one Neji Huga, Rock Lee, his girlfriend Sakura Haruno, and Tenten Higarashi, Falbium Asmodeus said in a sleepy tone. Panda, wait a minute, Naruto thought, wait a second my lords and lady, did you say Rock Lee and Sakura Haruno are a couple? Same Rock Lee with a bowl haircut, bushy caterpillar eyebrows, and wears green spandex? He asked in shock, he just couldn't believe it. Yeah, he got periodic updates from Anko, but he couldn't grasp the fact that Sakura fell for someone that constantly shouted about the flames of youth. Yes, it seems he saved her life a few times and hit it off from there. She even stayed by his side after the Jinchuri key of the one tailed raccoon crushed his left arm and leg during the Chunin exams, Sarex said, reading from the file. I see, the younger redhead said in a thoughtful tone. Forgive my outburst, what is our mission? I mean if Kanoa sent a team to protect this priestess, and him assuming that the other nations are fighting whatever forces this Morio has, is that correct? Very good young Katsune, yes, that is the case, however, should they fail, Morio will destroy this world. It is in our vested interest that we prevent this from happening at all costs. We will be sending your peerage to assist this team guy on their mission to escort Priestess Sheehan to the shrine where she is to perform some sealing jutsu, Ajuka Beelzebub said in a serene voice. Pardon me, my lords and lady, my king seems to be forgetting an important question regarding our mission, Haku stepped up, how much are we allowed to reveal to the five great nations? Ah yes, Sarex said thoughtfully, well, it'd say do not reveal that we are on this island because while I'm certain that our barrier can endure their forces, it'd rather not underestimate them as the previous occupants did, he started before catching the glare being sent his way by Kushina and Naruto, no offensive, obviously, as for what else you should not reveal is the evil peace system, other than that, feel free to reveal whatever you feel is appropriate, we trust your judgment. They all nodded and shouted in unison yes my lords and lady and were about to teleport a mile outside of the gates of the Hidden Leaf before Seraphal spoke up. Naru, wait, getting his attention, please, be careful and come back safely, you may be incredibly strong, but don't let your abilities blind you into underestimating your opponents, she said with a soft, loving smile before turning serious, and don't get distracted by your past with Muz, Higurashi all right. Naruto grinned, of course, I know there will always be someone stronger out there, I'll be careful, as for Tenton, I'll do my best, he said clutching his necklace. Kushina her hand on her king's shoulder and nodded, I'll make sure he stays focused Lady Seraphal, who knows, we might end up bringing back Panda with us, she said teasingly. Anyway, Naruto said coughing into his fist in an attempt to hide his embarrassment, let's be on our way, and would they disappear in their teleportation cycle. A mile outside of the gates of Kanoa. As they reappeared outside of the gates, Naruto turned to address his peerage, All right, everyone, I want everyone to unseal traveling cloaks and put him on, I don't want him to know our identity just yet. Especially you Kushi, the village would lose it if they saw you alive, they'd demand we bring back that bastard Minato. Nodding in agreement, everyone did as ordered, and summoned hooded cloaks that hid their faces and figures perfectly then proceeded towards the village, once there they were stopped by the eternal gate guards. Halt! The village is in a state of emergency, we cannot permit outsiders at this time, Kotetsu Hagen said firmly. Hey, still stuck on guard duty, Naruto thought before speaking aloud, we are mercenaries offering our services during this crisis, may we see your hockage to discuss our business? It was then an Anbu with spiky white hair wearing a dog mask appeared, Lord Hockage will see our mystery guests along with the council. Very well, let the way, copy ninja, Naruto said with a smirk causing Kakashi to go on edge. How did he know who I am, and why do three of our guests feel familiar? The copy ninja thought nervously. H is going to blow our cover with his pranks, was the shared thought of peerage member and familiar alike. Council Chambers, 
a very tired-looking Jiraiya sat at the head of the U-shaped table, in the middle stood Naruto and his group, the clan head sat around the table, Tsunade included, it was Naruto who spoke first, bowing respectfully. Lord Hokage, before we begin, might I ask that special Jonan Anko Matarashi attend this meeting, I have a feeling shall be of assistance to both parties, he said with a smirk. Everyone in the room gasped that this outsider was making such a request, but Jiraiya spoke sternly, and why would I do that? Because, Naruto started before removing his hood under the transformation of his former appearance, blonde hair, and non-slitted eyes, earning gasps from everyone in the room, she is a close friend of mine. In fact, if you want summon Sakura as well, I'm sure she would love to see her former teammate that died in wave on the great Naruto bridge. How? I killed you myself. It's tormented me every day. Kakashi said appearing and tearing off his Anbu mask, tears rolled down his face. And I am sorry about that Kakashi sensei. I will explain everything once Anko and Sakura are here. Should Lord Hokage accept my request? Naruto said solemnly. Jiraiya sighed and signaled for the Anbu to summon both mentioned Kunoichi. Thank you, Godfather, Naruto said his smirk returning seeing the frown and surprise clear on the toad sage's eyes, not to mention weariness, most likely from being hockage and cooped up behind that desk. However, while waiting for Sakura and Anko, Sume starred at Kushina's robed form, her noise having picked up on her long-lost friend's familiar scent, Kushina sensing her eyes on her looks to Sume does a subtle hushing motion with her hand getting a nod from the Inazuka. Minutes later, Anko and Sakura arrived with varied reactions, Sakura gasped and fell to the floor crying tears of happiness, not believing her eyes, while Anko merely smirked while thinking, so, it's time, is it? Hope he has what he needs to keep his promise to me. En Naruto, how? You died, Sasuke abandoned the village, your replacement was a spy for Orochimaru and left with him. If it wasn't for my boyfriend, I would have gone insane and likely taken my own life, Sakura stammered out while crying. He'll explain in a second Sakura, remind me to thank Rock Lee for taking care of you, Naruto said with a small smile. Now that your requested guests are here, mind explaining what is going on Naruto. Like how you are alive, who your companions are, and where you have been. Jiraiya asked, trying to sound like an authority figure, but the weariness in his voice was far noticeable. Yes, of course, to answer your questions in order, I did indeed die on the Great Naruto Bridge. However during the confrontation with Gato's goons, someone picked up my body faster than the eye could see. Who that person is will be revealed shortly, where I was taken to a place you call Hell, or the Underworld, whichever you wish to pick, they use their techniques to bring me back to life as a devil, but in doing so, I absorbed the fox's chakra and became the new nine-tailed fox essentially, as for who my companions are, I'm afraid you'll have to wait for further explanations, as for where I've been. I believe I explained that I was in hell, he said earning gasped from the shinobi, except Anko. If you are indeed the new fox, then you are now the property of the land of fire and the hidden leaf as our weapon, Danzo stated. This causes Naruto's group to go on guard and ready to attack at a moment's notice, earning the same response from the shinobi side, however, both Naruto and Jiraiya signal for both sides to stand down, but Naruto drops his transformation showing his true appearance and releases a very small fraction of his new power and directs at Danzo. Let me make this perfectly clear, I am not your property, your pet, or your weapon, the first Hokage was a fool to distribute the other tailed beasts among the hidden villages, his plan for peace didn't work did it? He asked rhetorically earning frowns from the council before continuing, no, that just gave birth to even more wars, the tailed beasts should have been allowed to roam free and be the protectors the sage of six paths wanted them to be in the proper way, not sealed within your fellow humans as weapons, they would have lived side by side if left alone and attacked and provoked. As he finished, he let up this power and calmed down, now, as I told the eternal gate guards, we're here to offer our help, we will assist in guarding and escorting Priestess Sheehan along with the team you have planned. 
Before Jiraiya could answer Danzo gritted his teeth before trying to use Shisui's eye to convince Naruto and his group to stay and serve Kanoa. Perhaps, if you enlisted your service perm but was interrupted by a katana running through his throat from behind, killing him instantly. As the blade with withdrawn from the corpse, a beautiful black-haired, ruby-eyed young woman walked out from the shadows holding her bloodied blade, a beautiful one at that, with a red guard and handle with seals running along with the handle, the girl was wearing red armored arm guards, a black sleeveless tank top that hugged her impressive chest with a white collar and red necktie, with a black skirt held up with a red belt and red pouches on each side, black stockings, and black shoes. Forgive the intrusion, but I was hired by Lady Seraphal to make sure your mission was not interrupted by this old fool, she said in a monotone voice before turning to the remaining council who were understandably on edge. Before you attack me, you should see what this man was hiding, she said as she removed the bandages covering the right side of his face and his right arm, showing the many Sharingan and the abomination of an arm embedded within and chest showing the face of Hashirama. What is going on here? Tsunade demanded, slamming her fist on the table, and who are you? First of all, allow me to introduce myself, I am Akame, an assassin in the employ of the devils, but am a human myself, I was sent here as a precaution in case Danzo tried to use that eye in his right eye socket he got from one Shisui Uchiha, that has a very powerful genjutsu within that influences people to do whatever the user wants so seamlessly it seems natural to everyone around the victim that it would seem they were doing it of their free will, as for his arm. According to the info I was given, Danzo was in league with Orochimaru and had your grandfather's DNA implanted within his right arm to be able to use those many Sharingan to cheat death. How he does that thought, I'm unsure. Akame replied calmly. Akame, right? Naruto asked getting a nod of confirmation. Thank you for your assistance. Will you be staying with my group for the remainder of the mission? If that is what you wish, I would like to speak with your group in private later as well, she said. I'm sorry, but can we get back on the subject? The fifth Hokage asked, Now, you said you are a devil, what do you mean? Naruto nodded and signaled for his peerage to show their wings. I mean exactly that, we are creatures of darkness, there is so much more to this world that you are unaware, some of which you'll understand, some you want, but I will explain the best I can, with my group filling in the gaps, however, before that, I'm sure you'd all love to hear how I learned that you, Lord Jiraiya, are or were my godfather, and abandoned your duties in favor of your spy network and spying on women in hot springs and other private moments for your books. Jiraiya flinched at that, feeling the key from every woman in the room, and surprisingly the most intense was from one of his godson's group, I'll admit, I'm curious what else you know besides that. Well, as I said, I was recovered by someone when I died, that person happened to be my mother, Kushina Uzumaki, former wife to that asshole, your fourth Hokage, the Yellow Flash, Minato Namikaze, she brought me to our leaders, the four Satans of Hell, and one of them was the one that made me into a devil. I even met Minato and learned he never loved my mother, nor did he love him, in fact, that corpse over there was supposed to find me and turn me into a mindless weapon. I assumed that you were to take me as an apprentice and force that ridiculous prophecy down my throat and thus force me to take up the promise you made to the leader of Nadashiko village. If it hadn't been for Haruzan, I would have been Danzo's puppet, he said before turning to the shinobi council, didn't you find it odd at how insistent he was about me being given to him? He was trying to follow his and Minato's plans. Jiraiya was feeling increasingly nervous. Minato's plan was laid bare as were his hopes for getting out of the promise to Nadashiko village, Tsunade looked she was about to rip off what makes him a man, is this true Jiraiya? Was all said in an eerily calm tone that promised pain. Yes, it is Aunt Tsunade, in fact, Kushina said throwing off her hood, feeling the time was appropriate to reveal herself, getting a nod from her lover and king. I wouldn't be surprised if Jiraiya influenced Minato with the Toad's prophecy and thus Minato trying to control me and Kakashi with seals, but he underestimated me as an Uzumaki, seals are in my blood. Shit, I was counting on Kushina being dead, and Naruto not dying in wave, damn it, Jiraiya thought. 
It's good to see you tomato. It's been a long time, Sume said with a smirk. Yes, it is good to see you too fleabag. You're lucky that you're the only person alive it let call me tomato. Thank you for looking after my son as much as you could, Kushina said with a tick mark on her forehead. Kushina, why did you play along with Minato after you found the seal on you? Tsunade asked. Simple, keep your friends close but your enemies closer, the older redhead said getting nods from everyone but Jiraiya who was sweating up a storm. Now, we've gotten off topic again, will you accept our help? A revived Morio is bad for everyone and we have the power to assist you to keep Lady Sheehan safe, Naruto said firmly, you can figure out what to do about your hockage later. H is right, what say you, everyone? Will we accept the help? It's obvious they are powerful, Tsunade said taking charge of the meeting. I say we do, ITD be too troublesome to send only Team Guy or rather Team Neji on this important mission, Shikaku Nara said in his usual bored tone. Everything is troublesome to you Nara, however, I would feel better having my daughter on the same mission as young Naruto, Kenshi said with a subtle nod towards Naruto, letting him that he knows about their connection. Aren't you afraid I might take her away if I can restore her memories? The Katsune joked. Not at all, in fact, if that does happen, I'll accept and support it, my daughter's happiness and health comes first, actually, I'm going to make it a formal request you help my daughter, the blacksmith says, each year her headaches get worse, I fear that will cause serious harm to her or even kill her if she is not helped soon. Of course I'll help. Naruto said immediately earning frowns from his girls. Um, so why was I requested if I wasn't called on? Anko asked, clearly annoyed. Oh, sorry Anko, I asked for you to be here in case they needed confirmation, he said scratching the back of his head. Why would she be able to confirm your intel? Sume asked with a raised eyebrow. Anko sighed, she figured it was time to blow her cover. I have been keeping in contact with Naruto over the last three years, giving him updates on what's been going on. Jiraiya forgot that he was in the hot seat and stood up, slamming his hands on the table, traitor. You were feeding intel to a potential threat. Not to mention keeping the information that Naruto was alive all this time. Anko smirked and decided to steal a line from Kakashi, huh? Did you say something? Before turning to her current leader, I don't think you're one to speak Jiraiya, in case you've forgotten, you're neck deep in shit. Fine, this meeting is adjourned, Shikaku you handled to mission debriefing with Team Neji and Naruto's team, he said getting up and left for his office. Troublesome, you don't need to be debriefed, do you? I assume you know everything about this situation, the lazy Jonan commander stated rather than a question. You're correct. We're well aware of what's been going on within the elemental nations, especially the threats, like the Akatsuki, and we know what they want, Naruto stated as if talking about the weather. Master, Yoruichi sighed, by the way, who are your companions aside from Kushina? Tsunade asked. Hey, all right ladies, take off your cloaks, Naruto said chuckling. When they did Sakura and Kakashi gasped, Haku. And you were that woman who calmed her down somehow. Wait, you that gorgeous woman calmed her down by informing her that Naruto was brought back to life. Sakura said, clearly in shock, but also upset that she didn't figure it out sooner. The name is Yoruichi, I am Lord Naruto's familiar. It's nice to meet you officially Kakashi of the Sharingan and Sakura Haruno, the dark-skinned goddess greeting. Familiar? Care to explain that? Tsunade asked think personal servant or summon, I am whatever he needs to be, bodyguard, messenger, sex slave, she started and ending in a teasing tone earning blushes from everyone in the room, catching that she was serious but also doing it to tease Naruto even if he was just face palming. Ah sure, and who is this? I think you're the only one we're not familiar with, Tsunade said awkwardly. Im Kalan Kazuki, Kalan said shortly earning sighs from the devils. Excuse her, she takes a while to open up to new people, Shush has had a hard life before we found her, Naruto said. Is there anything else we need to know before this mission? Tsunade asked. For now? No, 
We will explain everything else with permission from our leaders after the mission, he said. Very well. Meet us back here in two hours. Use that time to help Tenton and visit whoever you need to, the slug princess said dismissing the meeting. Speaking of Ems, Higarashi, can you have her meet us at Ichiraku Ramen? My son and I haven't been there in forever and they are old friends of the family. Would you like to join us Kakashi? Sakura? Kushina asked, wanting the reunion to be somewhere that should help with the poor girl's memory. Yes, of course, I'll even go get her. She is waiting for me back at our team's meeting place, Sakura said before she crumbles into dust showing her primary element. Tsunade sighed, I keep telling that girl not to do that, leave such a mess. Sorry Naruto, as much as I would love to join you, I must get ready for my part of this crisis, maybe some other time, Kakashi said before putting back on his mask and melding into the shadows. Naruto chuckled, we should be off, Sakura will beat us there if she uses the teleportation jutsu everywhere. Ichiraku Ramen, Naruto, Yoruichi, and the peerage put back on their cloaks at the council's request until they reached the ramen stand, where Sakura, Rock Lee, and Tenton were waiting. Oh, there they are. Tenton, one of them says he can help you with your headaches, Sakura said knowing she had to keep Naruto being alive to prevent chaos. Tenton eyed the strangers only get a searing headache, causing her to collapse, screaming in pain muttering Foxy, come back, don't leave me Foxy, and I love you Foxy. Panda. Naruto shouted running to her, catching her in his arms, Panda. Panda. Snap out of it, come on, wake up. He said gently shaking her. Huh, Foxy, you're, alive? Tenton said wearily, clearly not coherent or aware of what was going on. Everyone just stood back, watching the scene even if they wanted to help, they knew it was up to Naruto. While the girls he was in a relationship with were jealous, they also knew how important this was for their king and lover, that girl in his arms had a piece of his heart, whether they like it or not, meanwhile, Sakura, Lee, and Ayami, who came out to see what was going looked on at the touching scene. Im here, he says softly, carefully bringing out his necklace. Ha! Huh. Who are you? Tenton said as her headache passed, as her eyes focused, she noticed Naruto's necklace. How do you have that necklace? The boy who should have it died. She said pulling a kunai and pressed it to his neck. It's me panda, it's your foxy, he said calmly transform his hair back to blonde for a moment. You're wrong. My foxy, my Naru died three years ago. Tenton denied. Come inside the shop and I'll tell you everything. Just, remove the kunai so we can talk, he continued in the same tone. Tenton, please, let hear him out, trust me, Sakura said taking a step forward. Fine, but any funny business and ill kill you, the weapons mistress said sternly. Inside the shop, Ayami closed the shutters once everyone was inside, their Naruto explained absolutely everything, from the evil peace system to his heritage, and the supernatural. I can't believe it, you're, alive, Tenton said jumping to hug him. I missed you Panda, I wish we stayed in contact, but your mother would always shoo me away, even in the academy, you didn't seem to recognize me, Naruto said sadly catching her in the hug, pulling her in tight. Why yeah, the memory of that matron of the orphanage and her punishments scarred me, having mom and dad along with my new friends made me repress all memories of the orphanage, even of you. But this necklace is all that kept your memory alive, I'm so sorry Foxy, she said as she cried into his shoulder. It's okay, I don't blame you. I likely would have done the same had the chance to be adopted, but the damn council fought Lord Third every step of the way, Kiba's mom wanted to adopt me but again, the council, he smiled softly. She giggles at that thought pulling away and wiping her tears, thankfully she didn't, having an arrogant brother like Kiba would have been hell. Master, I'm sensing she has a very powerful sacred gear, Yoruichi said having had enough of the girl hanging off her man. Yeah, being close to her like this I can sense it too, he said sending her a glare telling her he didn't appreciate the jealousy interrupting his reunion. Wait a minute, you said these sacred gears manifest if someone is ever in mortal danger or something, 
I've been in plenty of those as a kunoichi and I never displayed any power like that, Tenten said in shock. Shusha's right, even before my most youthful rival Neji became Jonan, Shusha's never shown any power outside of her chakra and proficiency with her weapons, Rock Lee said still trying to wrap his youthful mind around it. I suspect that's because her skills are already similar to her gear, Kushina said from under her cloak getting everyone's attention you use scrolls to store countless weapons, right? Yeah, what's that got to with this sacred gear? Panda asked confused. Only one way to find out, but it's not a decision to take lightly, Naruto said, voice full of concern. What's this decision Foxy? She asked cautiously, he means that by making you into a devil, we could unlock your magical power and thus bringing out your gear, Callan bluntly, while she understood why he was hesitant, it was the girl's decision. Callan, Naruto sighed, he loved her but she was a blunt as a brick to the face, I guess I suppose I should introduce you to my companions, girls, drop the hoods. Nice to meet you Tenten, we've heard a lot about you, Imkushina Uzumaki, I was Naruto's mother before death, now I serve him as his knight and as one of his lovers, Kushina said. Seeing one of her idols in person, Tenten damn near swooned, why you're the Red Death, the most feared kunoichi in the last war, you're the reason I took up weapons in the first place. Giggling a little Kushina replied, Im flatted, Im Kalan Kazuki, pawn in the service of Lord Naruto as well as one of his lovers, it's nice to finally meet you, the temperamental redhead grunted. Im Yoruichi, Master Naruto's familiar, I am whatever my master requires, playing messenger, being a spy, delivering contract flyers, being his bodyguard, or pleasing him in bed, the Nekomata said with a smirk. Enough Yoruichi. Haku said sternly, Im Haku, and as his queen, Im his second of command, she started before looking to the side ashamed, Im, the reason he was killed on his mission three years ago, he took an attack that was meant for me when I was standing in front of my father figure trying to save his life, we fell in love, even if we enemies at the time. Tenton looked at her foxy's queen with a blank stare, trying to decide how she feels about this revelation, on one hand, she was furious, she wanted nothing more than to rip her apart for getting him killed, on the other hand, she could see Haku felt guilty and that guilt was tearing her apart, after a moment she sighed and pulled the ice user into a hug surprising her. You did nothing wrong, knowing Naruto died for love hurts, I'll admit, it makes me proud, I'll bet he died with a big grin on his face, Panda said softly, smiling seeing Naruto and Sakura nod, telling her she was right about how he died. Thank you, Haku said with teary eyes before continuing, but Callan was right, it's the only way without putting your life in extreme danger, but the choice is yours but know that if you join us, there is no going back, you'll have to return with us after our upcoming mission, we could offer the two of you the same offer, Sakura, Rock Lee. Looking between the three of them, they all nodded, well do it, however, I have to ask that you extend this offer to Lady Tsunade, she has no real loyalty to the village and has been looking for an out ever since she was brought back to head up the hospital. Shazun could easily take over and is far more loyal to the village, Sakura said, answering for her group. Naruto nods and summons his evil piece set, four of his pawns were reacting to Tenten, and both his rooks were reacting Sakura and Lee. Ha, huh, interesting, your powers must be something amazing panda, he said in awe before snapping out of it, all right, I'll do this one at a time, I army, Chuchi, do you mind if I use the back? It's easier to do this while the person is laying still on their back. Chuchi just stood there dumbfounded, so Ayami answered, Yeah, sure, come on you four. Nodding the four followed Ayami to the back room to a room with a cleared table but showed wear and tear of being a dumping ground. We use this table to put our supplies on while we're sorting and putting away our supplies but should be clean and hopefully comfy enough for whatever you're about to do she said sheepishly before making her way towards the front of the store, Ill, just leave you to it, I have a feeling it's not for my eyes. Thank you, Ayami, we'll be out shortly, Naruto said with a smile, which the ramen chef returned and moved to the front. All right, who wants to be first? He asked curiously as to who would step up first. 
It'll do it. I'm curious about what this sacred gear of mine is, Tenton said as she climbed up onto the table and asked shyly do I just lay down, or do you need me to take anything off? This caused everyone to blush, but the king coughed and shook his head, no, just lay down and stay still. Nodding and sighing in relief, she did as asked, she may love Naruto, but they have been apart for a very long time, therefore had a lot to catch up on, she wasn't ready to show him her naughty bits just yet. Once he saw she was comfortable, Naruto placed the pawns onto her chest carefully and started the ritual, Tenten Higarashi, I hereby grant you the powers and lifespan of a devil, be reborn in the service of Naruto Uzumaki as my versatile pawn. With that Tenten's body light up an orange glow as the four pawn pieces melded into her body, once done, Tenten sat up, surprised that the ritual was painless and that easy, she flexed her hands and stretched out her body. Well, how do you feel Tenten? Sakura asked nervously. I feel amazing, so much stronger than before. I feel as all the weapons in my scrolls are in a pocket dimension, she said as a golden ripple in space appeared with the business end of a katana coming out. Deciding to see where it went, she mentally told the weapon to launch forward into the wall in front of them, and when it did, earning a scream of fear from the other room, they were all shocked, especially Naruto. Sweet Leviathan, the gates of Babylon, Naruto said in awe. It was then that Kushina ran in with her sword drawn looking around frantically, is everything all right? What happened? Kushi, it's all right, that was Panda testing her gates of Babylon sacred gear, Naruto said still in awe, causing the older Uzumaki's jaw to drop. I, I see, ill informed the others, she said as she witnessed the sword disintegrate into golden particles. All right, who's next? Naruto asked as Tenten got off the table and stood beside him. Sakura decided to go next, curious whether or not she'd unlock anything special, and as it turned out, she did. After the ritual she felt so much stronger but felt like she had the power of a volcano at her fingertips, and after Lee's turn, he discovered he felt he had explosive power at his beck and call. You too, probably should NT try your powers here, let's save that for a training field or out on the mission, Naruto said nervously while thinking, just what those two powerhouses need, lava and explosions. Let's head back to the others and inform them of the great news, Sakura said excitedly. Back in the restaurant section of the shop, they took their seats and saw that the shutters were open, Figuring it was safe to reopen, their haku decided to ask the question that was on everyone's minds, so, aside from Tenten's rare gift, how did it go with Rock Lee and Sakura? It went great, Sakura and Rock Lee got incredible powers themselves, one's far too dangerous to test here, at least if don't want to destroy this place, Naruto said with a smile. Then we should find somewhere secluded to test and get used to them, Kushina said leaning on the counter. What's this about special abilities? Anko said with a smirk, leaning against the entrance to the ramen stand, I know a place we can go and not be interrupted, but, before that, I do believe you promised me to allow me to join you whiskers. Naruto nods, yes, I did promise, but I'm going to have to ask you to wait until after we've had our meal and we get to your training grounds, I don't want to inconvenience Ayami and Chuchi any more than we already have. Fine. But you better not forget, Anko said with a pout, sitting down to order some food with the group, and I better get introduced to everyone else there too, everyone laughed at her pouting and enjoyed a feast of ramen, total bowls adding up to 50 in total, with most of the bowls coming from the two Uzumaki thanks for watching here.